Good afternoon. Welcome to the February 25th policy meeting of the Phoenix City Council. I will call this meeting to order. We'll begin uh, with an introduction from our interpreter who will provide the uh, update in uh, Spanish. Mario. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Mario Barajas. I will be today's interpreter, one of the two uh, interpreters uh, provided uh, today. I'm going to be making a brief announcement in Spanish for our Spanish speakers. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Mario Barajas. Voy a estar sirviendo como su intérprete de español. Si acaso alguien necesitara el servicio de intérprete, podrán acudir hacia mí acá en la mesa de atrás para proveerles uh, los instrumentos para escuchar la interpretación. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mario. Last November, this council held its first policy session with public comment on the topic of civilian oversight. That meeting followed two work study sessions previously held on this topic and many hours of public meetings. Today, we will be reviewing civilian oversight options that have been submitted to city staff and we will take a vote. This is the first time in the city of Phoenix that a vote on civilian review has been brought before this council. Today's vote is the overall civilian review model. There are a lot of details, including bylaws, composition of boards, which we will not discuss today. Those discussions will come later if a model is passed in today's meeting. Today's civilian oversight discussion is one of many efforts the City of Phoenix is making to improve transparency and trust between our city's police force and our residents. We have sped up the rollout of body-worn cameras, now on every frontline officer. We've started a policy of tracking when officers point their guns at an individual. We've increased mental and behavioral health training. We've created an ad hoc committee that is in the process of reviewing previous recommendations and giving feedback on a community survey. Thank you to Councilmember Garcia and Councilwoman Williams for chairing that body. We are working towards broadening and enhancing our early inter intervention system. We are piloting programs that address behavioral health calls faced by officers in the field and partnering them with clinicians. In this year's proposed budget, we will be putting forward more resources into our public records department and creating greater efficiencies within that department to expedite releases of records to the public. These respond to many of the items that people have brought before this council in public testimony. We have, what we have accomplished in the last year represents a more cumulative effort of change than anything that has happened in the last two decades. All these measures represent more tools for our officers. We are adding to their toolbox to help officers better do their job not taking away from it. We know their profession is a difficult and dangerous one. A civilian review board is one more tool in that toolbox. This alone is not the tool to solve all community trust issues. It is one of many we are implementing. I deeply respect our police officers and what they do on a daily basis, and I know that our shared priority is keeping all Phoenix residents safe. To help, we want to ensure that there is, to help that, we want to ensure there is trust between our officers and the community they serve. We'll start today's meeting with a high-level overview of Councilmember Garcia's model and my own model. Then we'll have a more in-depth look at what each model entails during a presentation from our Assistant City Manager, Milton Dahoney. After the presentation, we'll take Councilmember questions and comments and then move to public comment. Lastly, we will take final Council comments before taking a vote. Today's discussion will undoubtedly elicit strong reactions from many community members. I want this to be a respectful and fruitful discussion. To move forward with modernizations, we need this meeting to be a conversation that goes both ways. It is only through this active dialogue that we can work towards solutions and make a positive impact on our community. We want to continue to hear from as many community members today as possible. However, we are going to take breaks. I am proposing the first break after two hours. We will take comment cards via the request to speak cards until 3.30. After 3.30, cards can be turned in on, on measure and will be recorded, but we will not have additional speakers. Each speaker will be granted two minutes. No donation of time will be allowed. There will be only one person allowed at the podium at a time unless translation or interpreter services are needed. If you need translation services, we will be using our translator, Mario, to do all of the translation today. I will, then, I will now hand it off to Councilmember Garcia for introductory comments. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you all for being here. Um, we didn't get to this situation in a vacuum. It's been a long process. I've heard stories of Civilian Review Board uh, conversations 40, 50 years ago, and then picking up in the 90s. Um, 
unfortunately, events happened in the last year, uh, mainly 2018 being the year that more officer-involved shootings happened in this city than anywhere else in the country, including some of the largest cities in the country. We've had the Ames family who was publicly terrorized on, on, on video and the entire country witnessed what our officers were doing. Um, we've had numerous sexual uh, assault uh, situations. Um, and so we've also had numerous attempts to try to fix this or try to uh, come up with solutions. We've had different ad hoc meetings. We've had different uh, communi community forums. And most of them, if not all, have ended up with the suggestion that we need civilian oversight um, of our police department. And more importantly, one that is community driven and that makes sure to investigate uh, what's happening uh, behind what is now perceived as closed doors as officers investigate themselves. We went on a six month process um, where we've spoken and got the, the, the support of over 60 organizations. Um, we've had over 20 meetings. We worked with various council offices. We've worked with attorneys, both at the city and, and city staff and also uh, consultants that have reviewed what we've put forward in Model B. Um, and, and I really hope that our colleagues up here could see the work that has been done, um, the input that's been put together, and, and more importantly to see that the difference between Model A and, and Model B is not a simple one. It is actually a big, big, uh, it's a big deal um, to be able to have investigative powers. We need the ability to, to make sure that an independent investigator is in the room and through the process and does their own reporting of each individual case along with advising policy, along with advising uh, meta changes to the department. We must have uh, a person in the room uh, to make sure that the community's input and the community's questions are, are involved. Um, Staff's going to go through both models, and, and I'll, I'll be willing to answer any questions or any concerns that are, uh, that are pertinent to our model. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Garcia. Thank you for your hard work on this issue. My hope today is that we can be the very first Phoenix City Council to pass a civilian review board model in the city of Phoenix. Uh, both, review model, both models here today do include a civilian review board. The model I propose, Model A, has many similarities with Model B. Both models create offices that take complaints, have community outreach components, report out to the community, and make policy recommendations. Model A addresses issues that Model B doesn't, such as the option of mediation and of producing one comprehensive report for the chief. I believe the main difference between the two models is in the investigation portion of Model B. Model B creates a parallel investigation that gives the chief a wholly separate report to review meaning that she must choose between the assertions of two separate reports. The Ombudsman model incorporates multiple viewpoints into one report. It has additional oversight throughout the process. We want a model that brings people together and creates buy-in with both the community and police officers. Model A represents input from a broad swath of community members as well as feedback from the police officers who will be involved in its implementation. Policy that represents this sort of balance and diversity of viewpoints is far more likely to outlast individual members of this council. In our model, the Ombudsman Office not only monitors the entire process, they can submit recommendations to the chief with comments on the PSB report, letting the chief know if there were issues or an investigation was conducted appropriately. Making sure that there is a collaborative investigation and input from both subject matter experts, civilians, and sworn officers gives a much broader and more comprehensive picture. Model A also includes a very important mediation component, which allows for a separate route to self complex and has shown a high level of success in other communities. The city of Denver has a mediation component, and in their surveys of people involved on both sides, it has an 85% success rate amongst users. We must take a big picture view of potential issues with the process and make large scale policy recommendations, not focusing just on individual cases. Model A does that. The Ombudsman model can monitor anything from a complaint of rudeness to an officer-involved shooting. The staff can use this information to track trends and make strategic recommendations based on data. 
Bringing people together on a topic as difficult as this one is no easy task, and I want to thank my staff, my fellow council members, their offices, and city staff for helping facilitate these meetings. I represent 1.7 million residents as well as 13,000 city employees. I take that very seriously. I do not think our job as elected officials is to try and make policy to fit a news headline. I think our duty is to implement good, sound policy that will help bring positive changes for all residents we serve and will last beyond our own tenure on the council. I hope that we can move forward and with policy that works for our entire community and stands the test of time. As our office went about the process of creating a civilian oversight model, we solicited and received input from subject matter experts, community advocates, neighborhoods, and individuals with direct experience of working in public safety. At meetings, I asked myself, could I look the mother of a police recruit in the eye and say that this is fair to her son or daughter? And could I look the mother of someone who's had a very difficult altercation with the police department in the eye and say this is fair? I feel the model I put forward today allows me to do that. What we've been discussing over the last several months and what we look at today is complicated, historic, and deeply personal. It is also a conversation that far predates many of us on this council. I believe any policy that moves forward on this issue needs to represent a balance. The solution our office put forward is not a banner for one side or the other. It represents the diverse needs of our entire community. Creating this balance means setting aside egos to create solutions representing many diverse voices. We have to live in a city where we bring visions together with diverse ideas. I want to thank you all for being here today and addressing this important and difficult topic. I would like to next introduce our assistant city manager, Milton Dahoney, who will take us through more of the details. Milton. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of council. Uh, seated to my right is Mary O'Grady, who has been our outside counsel throughout uh, this entire process. As indicated, we're going to walk through a short presentation uh, providing information regarding both models. By way of background, as it was uh, mentioned previously, this council has met four different times between July and November of 2019 to discuss civilian oversight. Today, we're going to be talking about two different models. Model A, which is the Ombudsman model, Model B, the Office of Accountability and Transparency. As I'm going through the presentation, you will hear me simply refer to Model A or Model B. Uh, on the screen uh, is a link, and that link will provide uh, everything that you're going to see discussed today, and I believe it's also listed again when we get to the last slide. So first, let's start with the topical areas that we're going to touch on today. Complaint intake, policy, community outreach, community reports, and investigations. We're going to walk through these topics two different times. The first one will be focused on the staff aspect of it. And the second time we walk through the topics, we'll be referring to the board. As mentioned uh, in the introductory remarks by our elected leaders, uh, both models contemplate the hiring of a staff, and both models contemplate the establishment of a civilian review board. What I will be doing is providing a side-by-side -side comparison of each category and pointing out what the role of the staff will be and what the role of the board will be beginning with staff responsibilities. So with regards to complaint intake, Model A intake, Model A will receive uh, community complaints. It will also receive commendations on police officers. Model A will have a mediation component for complaints. Model B will also receive community complaints from our residents. With regards to policy, Model A will make recommendations about policy, practices, 
investigations, and training. Those recommendations will ultimately go to the chief. Model B will review and recommend policy changes to the chief with input from the Civilian Review Board, or CRB. With regards to community outreach, the Model A staff will attend Civilian Review Board meetings. They will also establish youth and community outreach programs. Model B will implement community outreach programs and support services to impacted community members. With regards to community reports, Model A will provide an annual public report of audit findings and recommendations and additional reports as needed. In Model B, they will request reports to be issued by the police department and they will regularly issue their own reports with input of the CRB. With regards to investigations, Model A will monitor and audit police investigations and outcomes, and they will issue recommendations as needed. Model B will actively monitor and participate in PSB investigations and provide independent reports with disciplinary recommendations directly to the chief. Uh, I will point out here that both models uh, accept that the authority for disciplining officers rest with the chief of police. So now regarding the investigative process, we're going to walk through three different models. First, we will walk through the current model of what is done today. We will then do a comparison of the Model A aside the current model, and then we will do a comparison of Model B uh, beside the current model. So the current model, and We've had discussion about this, not necessarily in this form, but we had discussion about this in one of our uh, previous meeting. So we're again talking about the investigative process. It's all triggered by a complaint. So a resident of the city has a complaint. That complaint is received by the Professional Standards Bureau or PSB. PSB makes a determination regarding the complaint as to whether there is sufficient uh, information there to warrant a full-blown investigation, or they may refer it back to a precinct uh, as that might be the better place to address it based on the nature of what the complaint is. PSB would then initiate what in our system is called an NOI or Notice of Investigations. In plain language, that's simply alerting all the parties that an allegation has been made and an investigation needs to take place. From the NOI notice, uh, the next step is to interview witnesses and these interviews are conducted by PSB personnel. Coming out of the interview of witnesses, there's the gathering of information, whatever might be available, and then there would be an interview of the officer who has had an allegation made against them. Stemming from the interview, there will be an investigative draft, so this is just a draft report that's been prepared based on the interview, the information gathering, and then that investigative draft is shared with the officer uh, for a period of 21 days. 
at the end of the 21 days, there is an investigative uh, review a meeting with the officer where there is a review of the facts, and then PSB issues a final report. Depending on what's in the report, it may uh, indicate uh, the need to go to the disciplinary review board, uh, which you heard me comment on previously. The DRB is a combination of citizens and sworn officers, and then uh, that DRB might make a recommendation to the chief on what the discipline ought to be if the allegation is sustained. If there is a use of force involved in the allegation, then the final report contemplates going to the use of force board. Again, the use of force board is a combination of both citizens and sworn officers. Their role is to determine not whether or not use or force was used, but if it was in policy or out of policy. If it's out of policy, then that factors into what DRB uses to make a recommendation to the chief. So that's the current model. Now we're going to put the current model side by side with model A. Again, top of <clears throat> Okay. Uh, so model A again talking about the investigative process. So under the Model A version, a complaint is received by the staff of the Model A office. They will first see if mediation can occur in order to resolve the complaint. If mediation is not successful, then the complaint would be referred to PSB. PSB, just as I indicated previously, would make a determination about an investigation going forward or if the complaint needs to be referred back to the precinct where it happened uh, for a possible resolution. They would then go through the NOI, just as I indicated a few minutes ago, and then they would begin the process of interviewing witnesses. In the Model A version, there would be staff from the Model A office that would both review and observe the interview of the witness. They might potentially provide input um, for the interview process. There will be a gathering of information, and so the distinction in order to make in order to hopefully help you understand the difference between the two, the Model A staff is in a separate space from where the interview is actually taking place, but they can hear it. And they can offer uh, questions to be asked. The, after the gathering of information, there will be the interview of the officer, just like before. That interview would be observed by Model A staff. And then there will be an investigative draft, just as I indicated previously. The Model A staff would be able to review the draft from PSB. They would also be able to provide input uh, if needed. The officer would still have the 21 days to review the draft. And then there would be that uh, discussion that I mentioned. And so the discussion is the officer and their representative with PSB representatives uh, to go over the facts of the case. Then there would be a final report issued. And Model A, uh, if they have recommendations, they would forward them uh, to the chief. Uh, as part of the process. So the DRB that I talked about, Disciplinary Review Board, 
And then if force is used, same process, use of force board would be convened. They'd make a recommendation about whether it's in policy or out of policy. The DRB would then uh, recommend to the chief what they think the discipline ought to be. So that's model A. Now we're going to compare the investigative process with model B. So just like in Model A, a resident has a complaint. They go to the Model B staff to file the complaint. The Model B staff would do the intake, and then they would forward that complaint to PSB. PSB would still make its determination whether to go forward with an investigation or to refer it back to the precinct where it occurred. And then the NOI would be triggered. So all of this is consistent in all three models. The NOI triggers the investigation moving forward. Model B would then pivot to essentially a parallel investigation. So the staff in the Model B would be trained investigators. So they would be participating in the process of interviewing witnesses. So the interviewing witnesses would take place just like always. The uh, Model B staff would be present in the room and participate in the uh, questioning of the witnesses. Same with the gathering of information. Uh, same with the interviewing of officers. So the, the process steps essentially remain the same. Your NOI, you're interviewing witnesses, you're gathering information, and then you're interviewing the officer. In this version, Model B would generate its own investigative draft, and PSB would generate an investigative draft. Both drafts from both the Model B staff and PSB would be given to the officer for review for a period of 21 days. At the end of the 21 days, there would be the same meeting that I spoke of where the officer is represented uh, by a, a member and a uh, comparison of the facts. Model B staff would generate their own final report, PSB would generate a final report, and Model B, if they have a disciplinary recommendation, would make that recommendation directly to the chief. The um, PSB staff would still deal with the disciplinary review board uh, to make a recommendation. They'd still go through use of force, if that's appropriate, use of force board, um, and then ultimately make a recommendation to the chief. So those are the two models as it relates to staff functionality. So we walk through the current process, we walk through what staff would do in the topical areas, we walk for both models A and B. Now we're going to pivot, and my next set of comments are relevant to the board, board responsibilities. Same categories, complaint intake, policy, community outreach, community reports, and investigations. So with regards to complaint intake, in model A, the CRB uh, would uh, receive community complaints. The Model B CRB would also uh, have intake on community complaints. In terms of policy, the Model A board would make written recommendations on policy and practices uh, based on briefings with the ombudsman or other matters as requested by the board. Model B 
the board would review and recommend policy changes through a community process. With regards to community outreach, the board in Model A would have quarterly community outreach meetings and community input would, would be taken at those meetings. Uh, in Model B, the board would hold community forums and take community feedback uh, at those meetings. In terms of community reports, in Model A, the board would make written recommendations on policy and practices from the ombudsman's briefings on uh, closed investigations or other matters that are requested. And the board in Model B would give recommendations uh, to the Office of Accountability and Transparency, which has been referred to as OAT and would report priorities based on community feedback and concerns. In terms of investigations, the board in Model A would make written recommendations on policy and practices uh, based on briefings with their ombudsman on, again, closed investigations. And closed is an investigation that's all the way complete through the uh, uh, disciplinary uh, aspect of it. Uh, the Model B board would review a portion of completed investigations and resulting disciplinary decisions, and then they would also recommend investigations in response to community concerns. And so for council consideration today, there are two models, Model A, known as the Ombudsman model, Model B is the OAT model, and again at the bottom of the screen is the link that shows all the information that I have just presented. Uh, and with that, Mayor, members of council, uh, my presentation is complete. Thank you. Councilwoman Stark. Thank you, Mayor. I'm prepared to make a motion. Could I make a few comments before Please. the motion? Thank you. I've had the opportunity to talk to many constituents and stakeholders. I've taken the time to meet with groups who are pushing for a civilian review board. I've met with constituents who have been negatively impacted by police actions. But I've also talked with many community members who are very supportive of our police. On a regular basis, I attend Coffee with a Cop events for the precincts that serve my district. And the community action officers who serve my area also attend my meetings and community events. I personally know many officers. They are good people who are just trying to do their jobs, and they do their jobs well. But I think we've come to a point, one that's probably overdue, where we need to restore, create, and foster a sense of trust between members of our community and the Phoenix Police Department. Creating an office that is independent from the police department that can accept complaints will increase transparency and improve public trust. That office can accept complaints not only from the community, but also from our police who may feel they would like to speak up about an issue or something they feel is wrong. And they also need a place where they can go and feel that complaint will be heard. I want to thank Mayor Gallego Councilman Garcia, and my co colleagues on the council for taking the time to take up this important issue. There has been a lot of thoughtful discussion, time, and effort put into creating a model that will promote transparency, trust, and accountability. Therefore, I'd like to make a motion to adopt Model A. I will second that motion. Councilmember Garcia, do you have a substitute motion? All right, is there anyone who would like to offer a substitute motion? We will open it up for council member comments. Councilman DeCicio. Thank you, Mayor. Um, one, you always, you know, when you look at these things, you, know, you do have to give credit sometimes to your opponents on this. Uh, individuals know I'm, I'm not voting for either one of these things. I think they're bad and I'll explain why. But I do have to give credit to Councilman Garcia on something. 
the whole issue dealt with uh, subpoena powers and that how you would have to go to a charter to do that. I don't know how you did it, but you figured out a way to create, by having somebody in the room, you created that. You created your investigative ability without having to go get subpoena powers. Credit to you on that. Don't agree with you. <laughs> Strongly disagree with you on this, but if you look at it, but the bottom line, there's been a national narrative, and you hear the words, this is not meant to be directly at you, Deb, but at the bottom line is that you hear this word, we have to restore trust back into the police department. There's always been trust within the police department. It has been a national narrative of attacking our police, calling them murderers, calling them bad individuals. This has been going on for over two years, which leads to this. So you create a narrative that lasts long enough, and what ends up happening is you end up happening a situation where it's like, well, we really don't trust them anymore. That's just not true. The public trusts our police officers. It's only a very select group of individuals that have been out there pushing this narrative that our police officers are bad. They are not bad. We had one bad year when it came down to shootings, one bad year. And there was nothing because of anything that they had done. Our police officers work hard, they're dedicated, and they have done everything right. So for any individual to think that they have done something wrong, that they have to be restored trust, is misguided. And it is wrong what is happening to them. Um, a couple quick things. One, um, if you look at this, I'm just, just taking notes from this. And well, thank you for doing that. I mean, you actually did a very good job. If you look at Model A, it basically, and I get why some members of the police think it's actually OK to do it. It's because what, at the end of the day, pretty much keeps everything internalized. And, but it still spends $2 million, approximately. The Model B basically creates that outside entity that creates that separate report that's outside investigation so that they have conflicting, potentially conflicting reports, but still spends $2 million. Supporting either one of these things would follow the, the line that our police officers have done something wrong, that we have to restore trust. It's not about that at all. It's literally about whether or not we do trust them. And here's, I'm gonna give you at least a little piece of advice here. If a police officer says, I need you to get out of the car, get out of the car. If a police officer says, I want your hands on the steering wheel, you keep your hands on the steering wheel. Those are the things that as a, as a, a society, we are required to do. Our jobs as citizens are to follow their instructions, whether we like them or not, or don't think that we're being treated right. We are required to do these things as citizens of our community. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna be voting no on this mayor, and I know we've got a lot of cards. I may or may not stay for the whole thing, I don't know, I want to. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure I was here today for our police officers. And for every officer that's here today, thank you for everything that you do to protect us. Every one of you that are here, every one of you that are out there on the streets, thank God we have you in our community. We are blessed by God because of you. And do not forget that. There are a lot more of us out there that want and protect and, and want and respect you. And this is what's been happening at the national level. It's just now here in the city of Phoenix. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I would clarify that both models create outside entities. Uh, any additional council member comments at this time? Councilwoman Williams. Mayor, I've been involved with this for a long time and I'm very proud of our police force. They are often used as a model for this nation. And I thoroughly believe that the community has been very, very involved the last 10 years. We've had numerous committees they have made list of different things that they think would make our department better. And serving as the ad hoc chair, I will tell you that most of them are in some stage of progress being implemented. They're not easy ones to totally revamp an academy, totally change the methodology is a big deal. To come up with many of the others, it takes time it takes money, and quite frankly, we didn't give the money in some cases uh, for some of the equipment, some of the things that they're asking for, but I think they're all legitimate. What I don't believe is that we've given it a chance to work. 
I think that we have waited and really just in the last two or three years really been busy trying to implement it all. And I think it is totally premature to take this step at this point because I don't see that great a need. So I will not support either motion. Any additional council member comments? Mayor, just some clarification, right? So on Model A, does this model have subpoena power? Yes or no? Asking you all, yeah. Councilmember Nowakowski, um, Model A does not have subpoena power. Does Model A have um, investigation power? Model A has monitoring and monitors investigations. So basically, let's say if there's um, an auditor or an investigator or whatever that person's called, will they be in the same room as that individual being interviewed, that police officer? No, I proposing that they would be able to monitor the investigation, so they would be able to be there. They would be able to suggest questions. Would that? I mean, would they be in the same room, or would they be in an other room? I just want to make sure we we clear it up for everyone. I just want to bring it down in lay terms, right? Mayor, members of council, in the Model A version, they would not be in the actual room where the interview is taking place, but they would be able to hear it. Will they be able to um, ask questions directly to the officer being interviewed at that time? Uh, Mayor, members of council, they would pose questions through the uh, investigator. And Model A again, um, does it allow that individual to request officer files or, or reports on that officer? Mayor, members of council, I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question, but the investigative process that we currently have is still in play. So if PSB wants to look at files, they would be able to get those. But I'm talking about this other group that's actually in the separate room if they feel that they want some extra information, files from this person's history of being a police officer, um, are they able to request that? Yes, they'd be able to ask for that, but right. they're not conducting the investigation. Correct. So basically, after the process is over, they turn in their recommendation to the police chief, and the police chief gives her opinion on on which way she's going to go. She's going to go with the um, standard operations or with the opinion of this group A's um, written report. Mayor, members of council, um, nothing that was presented here today usurps the authority of the chief of police. The chief is the final authority on discipline. Okay. All right. Confused about the model. So both recommendations go to the chief, right? Not in Model A. Okay. And then basically in Model A, there's a report that's um, after the investigation that's made public, right? To the community? Uh, Mayor, members of council. Yes, there is a final report that comes from PSB in the Model A version. So the report, if you will, on the investigation that just took place is prepared by the PSB staff, not anyone associated with Model A. All righty. And now we're going to Model B under the... Um, one oh, clarification okay. on that. Uh, the monitor does have the opportunity to review the draft report and provide input if needed, um, which the recommendation would go to the chief. 
And so they don't automatically do a report as a result of the monitoring, but they have the option to do so if they think it's necessary after they have reviewed the um, PSB draft report. And really? some of this detail, we're looking at a high level um, overview of the proposal and a lot of the detail would be, you know, worked out in ordinance and implementation. Absolutely. And then on model B, there's two components, right? So on the first component, which is that accountability, transparency, do they have um, subpoena power? Um, Mayor and Council, as, as drafted, it does not have subpoena power. So no. can you walk me through the uh, process of that interview? So they're, they're actually in the same room. They're with our normal process. And are they allowed to ask questions at that time um, to the officer? And does the um, PSB, um, which is the Police Standards Bureau, um, are they conducting the interview? Or is it between the both of them conducting the interview? Or how is it done? Or can the um, PSB basically say that's, you passed the line, you can't ask that question? Mayor, <coughs> Mayor members of council, uh, the model as diagrammed shows essentially a parallel investigation, but you are combining your communication with both witnesses and the officer. So when a witness is questioned, uh, investigators from Model B would be present in the same room with PSB personnel. They would both be enabled to ask questions of witnesses, and they would both be uh, enabled to ask questions of officers. So they would be in, in the same room. So this is just my way of explaining it. Think of it as a co-facilitated interview. So um, my other question would be, so if one of our employees, because police officers are city employees, refuses to answer any of the questions from the OAT, um, is there any kind of compelling um, answer or question, or can they, can they just not answer the question? Council members, there is a personnel rule about cooperating with um, investigations that applies to city employees generally. So then they would have to answer that OAT's um, person that's in there, in the room with them, any question that they ask, right, regarding to the case. Subject to whatever, you know, um, how that personnel rule would be applied under the circumstances. So if it's not relevant, who decides that it's not a relevant question? I just want to clear all this because I want it later on in the future, we're going to say, well, we were under the impression that this person could ask questions and that the officer or the city employee would have to answer them back. Mayor and Council, how that would play out in any individual circumstances, I don't really want to, um, I think, speculate at this point, but mm -hmm. I think I can see circumstances where if an investigation is uh, you know, um, I had my lawyer hat on and I was representing the person being interviewed where I might right. object and say, I think we're done here. This isn't, you know, a fair process. Um, and then see how that would be applied under the personnel rules and make your record and see how, but that's why some of that I think would depend on the circumstances and how it would play out in, um, in implementation. And then one of the things that I heard was... Um, I, I just, just to ask and to add to that though, Questions with city employees generally, as it relates to investigations, have to relate to the investigation underway, right? So the notice of investigation lays out the four corners of what's being investigated. And so the questions by any city, um, city review or to civilians or sworn has to stay within that NOI. They, the questions have to be relevant to the investigation that the employee has been noticed for. If they wanted to go outside of that, again, generally speaking, uh, they would have to do a separate 
notice of investigation for something that that question would relate to if it weren't covered first. Does that does that make sense, Councilman? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it's on the record so in the future, if there's any questions that we we have something to go back on. Right? It's important because our employees have civil service rights and the personnel rules that lay out lay lay out those boundaries that would have to be followed um, in the, that case. And there's there's no reason to assume that they would not be followed in either model, but they would have to be followed. Right. Uh, it's important to to add that the employee does have a representative with them when they're being questioned. They're not in there by themselves. Perfect. Can I and then, take, and I have, I'll let Councilman Nowakowski complete his question. And basically, um, how is the city staff selected for the OAT? Who selects those individuals? Uh, Mayor, members of council, we, we really haven't gotten to exactly how that will happen. Um, the, what we were trying to do today is present a framework of two different models. There are a myriad of things associated with actually implementing either one of them where work on that has not begun. I would add, though, that both models uh, place the, these employees, whether it's the OAT or the ombudsman, they are placed in the city manager's office, so they are city employees. Then they would be subject to the city's hiring practices. We would, we would create um, job, uh, job descriptions, job classifications, and we would go through uh, a standard hiring process where we would look for skills and expertise that align with those job descriptions of auditor or investigator or secretary or lawyer or whatever the, they are. Uh, to hire them into the city, and then they would need to be trained into that job in, in either model. So basically, the city council or the mayor, we don't hire or fire anyone except for maybe the city manager and the judges. Councilman, that's correct. Okay. So we're not going to be the body hiring those individuals, right? Correct. Okay. And then the, um, and then what are the qualifications, or that would be something that you'd come up with later? Uh, Mayor, members of council, yes. So at, at some point, there would need to be a determination made of exactly which category of employees you're going to hire. And then once that's determined, as the city manager indicated, there would be a specific job description uh, for those jobs and they would be hired against those qualifications. Now all this investigation, information, documents, that's released to the community after the investigation is over and the, and the chief makes a decision? The, the confidentiality requirements repl remain in place until it's over and there still may be some instances in which certain information might be confidential beyond that. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Mayor. Councilwoman Pastor. I would like uh, some clarity uh, in the process uh, because I don't, I think there were specific questions the councilman asked that got a little confusing. Um, I see what the only difference between A and B is um, they're both running uh, parallel in the sense of they're both part of the investigation. Uh, the difference between A is that they're not in the room and what some people consider there's a, uh, an observation room or a wall. And if uh, there are questions, then they submit the questions. Uh, I don't know how they submit them. I don't know if they put them under the door or how, how it's happened, but they submit these questions. As uh, Model B, as it's running parallel, um, in the process, they're in the room. So that's really kind of the difference, is that one is in the room and one is not in the room. And in the process, if there are any questions that, um, I guess the OAT, or uh, the investigator, I don't know what we want to call that side, but um, if they have any questions, they have the ability to ask the question. 
However, in this whole process, as they run parallel, it's all following and it's all in the boundaries of the rules of PSB in the sense of the way the questioning happens because, and I don't know if we have the chief here to ask, but uh, in the sense of that they have, there's a, a specific process that goes on in the investigation that uh, is written or I'm not sure, I can't remember the, the, the term that they use. And if you go out of that process or violate that process, then the meeting stops at that moment. So I want to know if I understand that process correctly or am I off? So, uh, Mayor, members of council, what is consistent between the current process, Model A and Model B, is that the NOI is what triggers everything. Okay, it's the NOI. That's the it. NOI okay. is the formal notice to a person that some allegation has been made against you. And so what's being investigated is whether or not the person is culpable based on whatever the allegation is. So if uh, to Council Manoakowski's point, you get into the investigation and you're looking at, did I take this white cup? But then you want to investigate while I drive a Ford instead of a Cadillac, that's out of bounds. Right. And so it's a simplified way of saying you have a focus of why you're there and the investigative questions should fit that. Okay, so it's it within the boundaries uh, as the, in Model B. There, I mean, the oak can't go off and say, uh, were you driving a four? What, it, it, it depends on what is in that um, process or description or investigation, whatever the term is. My second question is, as they are going through the process, and Model A, if the unsbudsman um, sees some type of different finding from the PSB, it looks like the arrow says, recommend given to the chief if needed. I'm looking at the the review draft of PSB report and provide input if needed, but there's an arrow looking like it's separate and they write, write a report. Am I correct or am I, am I the, interpreting? The more? ombudsman could disagree with the PSB recommendation. We would hope starting with the chief, but the ombudsman could talk to the community review board as well as to the city council and to the media. Okay, but Mary, I need you. I need. I need to understand this. Um, so, in that box, if the unbusman disagrees with what the findings were in the PSB, how I am reading it, it is a separate report. Mayor and Council Member Pastor, I read it as whether they can provide a written. Um, different written recommendation and whether you call it a report I don't or what, just yeah whatever it'll be it is in written, there, it's in separate writing. what I'm trying to mm -hmm. establish mm -hmm. or demonstrate is that even in model a just like model B separate reports can come in to the chief correct okay that's what I want to establish and make clear separate reports can come in separately to the chief which then mean ultimately if you look at both models Ultimately, um, the discipline recommendation still lies in the chief's hands with two reports. It could be possible. Right. It, it, it always, it both, under both, it absolutely remains with the chief, and option A does have the possibility of the okay. ombudsman providing an additional report if needed. 
It's really based on the Denver model where they're participating along the way and providing questions, but it's not a separate report. So. So. That's not how it's written, and that's not how it is in these documents. So. Are we ready for public comment? We'll begin with Kevin Robinson, followed by Maria Castro. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, my name is Kevin Robinson. I live in Council District 6, resident of Phoenix since 1974. Um, currently, I'm a lecturer at Arizona State University in the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. I teach five classes each semester, and I'm telling you this because I'm going to get to a point. Five classes each semester, roughly about 400 students. Before teaching, I've been teaching full time for about three years now. I was with the Phoenix Police Department for 36 and a half years. In those, of those 36 and a half years, 13 was as an assistant police chief. 12 of those years was as the chairperson of the disciplinary review board. I can honestly say, and these are just the facts, this is just a statement, it's just a perspective. In those 12 years as the chairperson of the disciplinary review board, I probably made more recommendations of suspensions, terminations, and demotions than anybody in the history of the Phoenix Police Department. Again, that's a fact. I never made not a single one of those decisions without an impassioned discussion with members of the public. There were members always on the disciplinary review board. There were members that we always sought out their advice. We sought out their input. So the Phoenix Police Department has always been out in front on those types of things. Honestly, I think it's time that we move beyond that type of setup. But of the two options that are listed, and I mentioned earlier that I'm an instructor at Arizona State University, roughly 400 students each semester. So I come in contact with a great deal of folks for a great deal of reasons. And a lot of them are looking for jobs in law enforcement agencies. And we take the time to really explore what's out there from a federal, state, and local level. And there are some good folks who want to follow in that profession. So that's a good thing. But one of the discussions we, we spend a great deal of time on is what is fair and what is just. You know, if you think about it for a second, they're not the exact same things, but it's important for us to distinguish between what is fair and what is just. Of the two options that are listed, and this is a review on my part, and I have had the opportunity over the years to visit other cities, looking at their disciplinary processes as well as their civilian review boards, I think it is time we move in that direction but of the two options, option A is more fair and it is more just than option B. I say that because both of them need work, just being honest about that. But of the two that are listed, one is definitely more fair and just to everybody involved than the other, and that is option A. When you look at the employees, you look at the citizens, you look at the opportunity for involvement, and you look at transparency, you look at everything, I think it's critical. So I thank you for your time, and the last thing I will say is congratulate you, Mayor and the Council, because this is an issue that's been around for a while. And this is the first time in all those years I was with the department, the first time, and Ed, you know this, and everyone else who has been here for a long time, this is the first time the Council, the Mayor and the Council have had the courage to at least address it. I don't know which direction you're going to go in, but thank you for at least having the courage for that. Thank you very much. Maria will be followed by Britt London. Good afternoon, my name is Maria Castro, and this weekend I spent um, some time with my sister and teaching my nephew how to throw a football, something I don't know how to do, I had to look it up on YouTube. Um, but the reason I had to do that was because one of your officers killed my nephew's father. And at the beginning in your opening remarks, Mayor, you said, would the families of those who lost loved ones be okay with the model that you presented? And I'm telling you, I'm not okay with that. I am not okay with that. My, my son is never gonna know his uncle. My, my sister is never going to be the same. My nephew is struggling to do basic kid things. He goes to counseling three times a week. Um, and your, your officers destroyed our lives and you wanted to know what the community wanted. We have been working on this for months, ever since this opportunity presented itself. 
Um, the lies that you have been spreading in the media about whether it might change city charter or that might interfere with state law is cowardice, in my opinion, because you are degrading our community um, model. What, because we, the, we look the way that we look? Is it because we're brown and we're less educated? Did you assume that we weren't going to cross-check these things, that we weren't going to be prepared enough to present something that was viable, that was passable? It's insulting. And because this is not something that is politically convenient for you, it's not ex politically expedient for you, you scramble to put something together in the last two weeks and it is a slap in the face to all of our families. It's a slap in the face to all the people who have been affected by this every single day of our lives. And so I urge everyone on the council to follow the lead of hundreds of, com of community members, not just the, the ones in here, but hundreds of people who have come together to put this model together and not just threw something together at the end of the day because it wasn't politically convenient for you. Britt London will be followed by Abraham James. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council, Britt London with the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association. Uh, this process has finally evolved to a point where we're actually looking at a plan uh, that is supposed to ensure trust between the council, the community, and police because, believe it or not, council and police are part of this community. Um, I can say right now that the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association cannot support any model that does not show how the entire Phoenix community, which includes police officers, benefits. Um, what I would like to do is give you the thoughts of our membership, uh, and that's what I'm going to do, is voice their concerns here today. We represent 2,252 of the over 2,900 police officers in this city that work for Phoenix. This is almost every single patrol officer on the street, every detective in investigating cases, and every specialty detail in between. We know about policing and we have the best view of the job because we do it. We're the ones that make the arrests, we write the reports, we go to court and testify, but we weren't included in this process. And I'm not saying it's proper that we should have been there from the get-go, but if uh, some of the questions that came from the membership are, uh, do you believe everything that comes out of, and that sounds bad, Chief, uh, do you believe everything that comes out of the uh, fourth floor from the police executives from their standpoint? Um, does the city council have a trust issue with police officers? Is it because our answers to questions are sometimes more direct and raw than what you want to hear or what you want to see out in the media? Um, most officers will not involve politics, uh, but of course they always have in the back of their head, well, if I tell the truth, am I just gonna get fired? Um, or is not involving us because it would not play into an already established narrative? These are just questions that are in the minds of their members, our membership. Will either of these models be considered today actually benefit the entirety of the community? I believe these models will potentially provide divisive especially Model B. It's easy to say that you don't trust what you don't understand or like. You could play the what if game. Thank you. Thank you. Neither model shows how you will put distrustful thank minds to ease. Thank you. And I thank you. Thanks for the time. Thank you, Abraham will be followed by Gail Knight. My name is Abraham James. <clears throat> I live in uh, District 8. From my early days growing up along the coast of Georgia to the present, I've had, my, I've had a number of police encounters. As a matter of fact, I remember every encounter I've ever had with every police officer in my life. Many encounters mostly have been positive but the negative interactions are never forgotten. It can leave a scar upon one's body, soul, and humanity. In October of 1984, I moved to Dallas, Texas, to begin my 
architecture career. After two years of being stopped 10 times by the Dallas police for no more of a reason than being a black man walking down the street, I moved to Phoenix. The next month, Evan Meek was elected governor of Arizona. I have heard stories about my parents and their parents and other ancestors about their past encounters with the law. And none of it was positive. The trauma that they've experienced was passed down through the generations. From where I come from in the South, the history of police goes back before the beginning of this country. Forced enslavement of Africans, slave patrols, the militias have evolved into the reality of what we deal with today. Mass incarceration, police brutality, and police shootings. My latest Phoenix police encounter was Saturday morning, December 7th, 2013 on Monroe Street in front of the Rosin House in Heritage Square. I would like to believe that Officer Danny Almos and Sergeant Prewitt have evolved as better Phoenix police officers and better human beings after their encounter with me, but I may never know that. President John Kennedy once said in a speech about going to the moon, we should go to the moon in this decade and do the things that do other things, but not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Well, as a nation, we have been to you the moon and back. You could give us your final thought, please. A number of times, but our, heart, but our problems are earthbound and they are hard to solve. Thank you. Thank you. Gail Knight will be followed by Ben Lauschner. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. Yes, Councilwoman Velda Williams, it has been 10 years plus. We have been there before for a long time through many, many different different committees. And the bottom line out of each one of them was the request for a civilian review board. And I think that is very admirable of you all to get to this point because we never got past the city manager at that time. But now we're before you all asking to look at the models, look for their commonalities in both of them, and decide what can be included from both. Also look at when you're doing this. I am concerned about when this is initiated, that it ends up in court. And let's do all we can to keep it from ending up in court because it may be violating the rights of a civil servant. I don't think most people understand that the City of Phoenix police officers are also civil servants. And there are labor laws that we must be mindful of as we're working towards putting this particular entity in place. So when individuals are thinking that as a lay person, as a community person, that they have the right to be on every review area, it is important to educate them on why they cannot be there, maintain the transparency and the trust so that they will understand why there's some areas they cannot be included in. But let's make sure that this is an open process where everyone has the opportunity to give input, where everyone feels comfortable about what we're moving forward with, and that we can make this finally happen in the city of Phoenix. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Lauschner will be followed by uh, Janine, Sch I'm sorry, Janine Schmeck Gelsinger. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Thank you for this opportunity to be heard. I'm Ben Leuschner, and I'm the president of the Phoenix Police Sergeants and Lieutenants Association, 
We represent over 400 sworn supervisors of the Phoenix Police Department. I appreciate the passion and dedication that members of council and members of the public bring to the conversation about how to best improve policing in the city of Phoenix. PPSLA also shares the goal of constantly improving policing in Phoenix. PPSLA believes that the best way to accomplish this goal <clears throat> is to work together, to build trust. We believe that building trust is best accomplished when sworn and civilian members are on the same team. PPSLA has concerns with both proposals in front of council today, as we believe that they have the potential to be divisive, to set civilians in opposition to sworn members of the department. We are particularly concerned with option B, Councilman Garcia's plan. This plan is actually designed to create conflicts between the department's investigations and a parallel investigation conducted by investigators that will not have the experience and training that members of the department have. Although PPSLA asks that members of council vote no to both plans today, we do not believe this is the end of the discussion. We appreciate the leadership and willingness to work together shown by Mayor Gallego and as this conversation moves forward, we look forward to continuing to work with her and her staff and council on ideas that can bring the community and the police department together. We remain committed to working with decision makers to improve the department and to increase the involvement of civilians in department oversight. Thank you for your time, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Janine will be followed by Jerry Oliver. Good evening, I'm Janine Gelsinger, and I am the Executive Director of UU Jazz, which is the Unitarian Universalist Justice Arizona Network. I'm here as a person of faith. As Unitarian Universalists, our principles call us to justice, equity, and compassion in our relationships, and building a just and peaceful world for all. We strive to build interdependent, equitable, and accountable communities. And as a religious tradition, we've learned a thing or two about accountability. We know that just as ministers cannot only be accountable to other ministers and priests cannot only be held accountable to other priests, police cannot police themselves. We must be accountable to the community that the police are sworn to protect and serve. And we know that you know that too. Mayor Gallego, Model A version leaves out the investigative component that the community has been calling for for months. The Model B that community has put together is an independent investigation component that is so important to accountability. And to us, Model A is a watered down version that doesn't create real accountability to the community. We hope that you'll vote for Model B and that all of you today will take this step forward into creating a more just, peaceful, and safer Phoenix for everyone. Thank you. Jerry Oliver will be followed by Carol Coles Henry. Good afternoon. Mayor and City Council members. My name is Jerry Alton Oliver Sr. And I am a native Phoenician, I'm raised in this community, retired from the Phoenix Police Department in 1990, and went on to serve three other police departments around the country. I was a police chief in Pasadena, California, police chief in Richmond, Virginia, and Detroit. I think I know a little bit about oversight and citizen involvement. The Phoenix Police Department, believe it or not, is a respected police department around the country. In fact, I believe we are a world-class police department. I also believe that we, in order to maintain that and to improve, we need to definitely take a look at civilian inclusion beyond, as Kevin Robinson said, beyond disciplinary review board, use of force board, citizen uh, civil service, and to give our police department, our police officers, our police leaders, the best opportunity to be a world-class police department and to practice excellence in policing. 
the framework that's been presented, A and B, those two frameworks, I believe that model A gives us the best opportunity to move forward. Is it complete? No, it doesn't sound complete, but it definitely sounds like the framework that we need to move the police department forward and to provide trust and to provide uh, the citizens of the com our community with the opportunity to be involved. Vote for Model A if we want excellence in policing in Phoenix. Thank you. Carol Coles Henry will be followed by Janelle Wood. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of the council. My name is Carol Coles Henry. I lived in Phoenix for 40 years. I'm a resident of District 8. I've been committed and passionate about serving this city and the residents for a very long time. I'm the retired Phoenix Equal Opportunity Director. Today's meeting is, is uh, monumental and very significant because the dialogue on citizen review has been around for more than 40 years. Many people don't know this, but Phoenix has had a long-standing historical call to action for the city to do something from a, from a city perspective about addressing community concerns about, concerns about building trust, accountability, and transparency between the Phoenix Police Department and the diverse community that it serves. Civilian review is one such way to accomplish that. Over 40 years, I've had the history of engagement on this issue from various points of view. Today's call to action builds on past efforts in regards to the topic. Back in the early 90s, managing the city's police commendation complaint program between the Equal Opportunity Department, Human Relations Commission, Police Department, and local and human civil rights agencies. This included everything from complaint, intake, re and reporting. It had its challenges, but it never was enough. Back in 2015, working with Julian Nabosny, we co-chair it with a committee of diverse people who were community leaders and members of the City Managers Police Community Trust Initiative. These amazing folks came up with 15 recommendations of which one of them are closer to Model B. However, what I'd like to tell you that today, through the thoughtful, deliberate, and creative uh, opportunities that we employed during all of 2015, we uh, came up with Model B but what I want to tell you is that Model B in its language said convene a panel of community members and one outside expert to explore, imp explore implementation of civilian review body to hear and review complaints against PD. Well, lastly, what I'd like to say is I'd like to thank the mayor for our courage and leadership on this issue. Both models are noteworthy and worth consideration. I understand the importance of taking time to engage as a council and with the community. But what I implore you today is to take action, whether it's uh, Model A or Model B, that you leave here with a definitive decision and a commitment so that the community can understand that change is going to happen in the city of Phoenix. I ask you to include you. an evaluation of whatever selected model is within a year of implementation that meets a litmus test for community concerns for increased accountability, transparency, and trust. Thank you. Janelle Wood will be followed by Marcy Lynn. Greetings, uh, Mayor Gallegos and City Council members and to each one of you. My name is Janelle Wood. I am the uh, Black Mothers Forum president and I also sit on the ad hoc committee for the mayor uh, on policing. And one of the things that we have seen repeatedly is a whole litany, hours upon hours of recommendations uh, for transparency and accountability. This Civilian Review Board option is the only one that will provide the oversight and the accountability that we need to make sure that the recommendations that we've heard will actually be implemented. We also want to make sure that you, as our city council, as our representatives, operate with leadership courage. You need to have the courage to stand up for what's right for our people. Our black and brown children have been terrorized 
at times by police officers that are not friendly. But I want to say this. I have nothing against the police in general. There are some really good police officers that I have met, and they have been friends to our community. And so to those officers, I give a kudos to you because you have tried to do what you can to make this a protected and safe place for our environments. But for those individuals who have decided they're going to use their power to terrorize and threaten people, we need to have oversight. We also need to make sure that the fear of the unknown, because we don't know what this is going to look like, will not keep us in bondage to what we currently know, which is not currently working for any of us. And so there is no loss of power when we have a civilian review board. There is a sharing of responsibility. And I see a whole host of individuals in this space that are willing to share that responsibility to make sure that our police department carry out their mission to protect and serve everyone. I thank you for your time. Marcy Lynn will be followed by Jeffrey Federoff, and it is 4 o'clock. We are going to take a break at 4.30. Okay, hold on, I can't see. I go. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council, Council people. Um, I am in District 8, and I do not approve of either plan. I think the police already have an oversight review committee. They're vetted and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, they are trained, educated in law enforcement, firearms, tactical training, uh, police procedures, laws, et cetera. And I think it would be absolute chaos putting untrained citizens, um, civilians, in that position. Um, that would be no different than let's have all of you up here and myself, let's just all go and get a civilian review board for um, surgeons and medical doctors. So, I mean, but we're not trained. We couldn't do that, or for the FAA. So I don't know how you think it's even possible to have untrained civilians, plus it's $2 million. I mean, everybody saw the news yesterday with all the homeless camps. Take that $2 million and put it into either hiring more police. We're so short with police. Britt didn't have enough time to, Britt London, President of Plea, didn't have enough time to talk about how short our police force is, but we have syringes on playgrounds. We have all kinds of stuff because we don't have enough police. We need more police, more police staff, and maybe start thanking officers. I'm alive today because of the police, so I don't break the law. If someone tells me to stop, I stop. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Jeffrey will be followed by Alexandra Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor Kate. Thank you, Council. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Federhoff, and I am a count or candidate for City Council District 1. I strongly support Councilman Garcia's plan, the OAT plan. The uh, plan to have investigators as, or the community as a part of the investigatory body is what we need. We are already shown that the model that we are currently having and the Model A, which is very similar, doesn't work. It does not address the problem of uh, the police policing themselves. So adding more, adding more, or, uh, more civilian uh, oversight into the uh, investigatory policy is what we need. Um, there is no problem with having more sunshine to disinfect the problems inside of the police department. There are problems. We want to make it better. We don't hate the police councilman DCCO. We don't have a problem with police. We have a problem with police behavior and misconduct. So what we need to do is we need the people of the community to be part of the investigatory process, to be the people that are asking the questions, not to be the one who asks someone to ask someone to ask the question. We need to be in the room, which is why I am also running for city council so that we can be on the council. We do not need to continue this process of having these meetings over and over and over again where nothing actually gets done for the people. The people need better representation, and they need the Civilian Review Board as Plan B. Thank you very much. 
Alexandra will be followed by Benjamin Taylor. Hi, Council, hi, community members. Uh, Sal Decisio, um, in your district, District 6. Uh, my name is Alexandra Rodriguez. I'm a student in high school right now, a senior, part of the organization, uh, Poder in Action, I'm a youth organizer there. Uh, we've been calling um, for a type of oversight like this for months. You've sat here and listened uh, and have taken slim action of what we're, the little we're requesting, the little bits of what we're requesting. We're requesting to be in the room this is not anything new. We, we're under, we, as a community, we're calling for an independent, investigative, and transparent community-driven. You've heard these terms over and over again, um, and it's time for you to take action. Uh, and I'd like to call out a myth of uh, Model B, something in Model B that people have been calling out. Um, we, are, we, are, we do have enough power equipped to be trained. Uh, we're, not, we're not stupid. We're not stupid community. We can be trained and hired to be part of this, of this board and, uh, of what we can create and have connection with council and city staff uh, that's possible. Um, this is not something drastic that we're calling for. Uh, we're here in numbers. It's not just us it's here in the room. There's a bunch of youth. I'm representative of I'm a youth organizer and I'm representative of youth. I can tell you that youth care about this issue and youth want to see us be a part of this city and work with this to, to, to strengthen us. And that's what we're calling for. Thank you. Ben Taylor will be followed by Twana Brunson. Good afternoon, Council. I'm Benjamin Taylor. I'm an attorney. I've had the opportunity to um, work with many of you already, and, and some people might already know we go up against the city sometimes um, when officers uh, are accused of police brutality and shootings. And this, today, these, both models, I'm in support of both models. But just kind of like what Ms. Gil Knight said earlier, we've been here before. I was here and spoke when the body cameras were, was implemented, and a lot of times things get kicked down the road. The can keeps being kicked down the road continuously. And right now we have two models up to, for a vote, and while I'm looking at the votes, both models might get voted down. So I think the citizens and people want something to happen, want something to actually be implemented for a review board. But looking at the votes right now, I'm not sure what's going to happen, and both models could be voted down. So at the end of the day, if it's plan B, model B, model A, whatever it is, I think the citizens really want something. And we can always go back to the table, to the drawing board in the future if something's not right. But I think voting for something today to get implemented, the city of Phoenix deserves that. Thank you. Tuana will be followed by Alex Love. Mayor, I have a question. Uh, Council Member Garcia. Uh, I just want to clarify, there's folks that are coming in, they can no longer, they're not being allowed to speak, is that correct? We have, uh, I think, I can, I, I will tell you how many hours of testimony we already have in a moment, but it's... But anyone that walks in the room now cannot speak? We stop taking cards at 3.30. Thank you. I don't know, is that, yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to say thank you to the mayor and city council today for making this a focus because <clears throat> it is important to the community. I am on the board of the Broadway Heritage Neighborhood Association. I'm a veteran that served and was honorably discharged from the United States military. I respect and appreciate our officers. However, I do believe there is a need for a civ civilian review board to oversee investigation of critical situations that occur. There are commonalities within both models. So I'm gonna recommend that both parties work together on a model that the community can support. Thank you. Thank you. Alex will be followed by Dr. War uh, Dr. Stewart. Thank you. 
Hi, um, my name's Alex, and I am uh, one of the watchers. So I watch the police uh, doing their day-to-day, night-to-night thing. Um, I run Phoenix Cop Watch. Um, it's a form of accountability, uh, which some of these officers are actually trying to fight this independent uh, form of accountability. A camera cannot lie. Um, yes, there's commentary behind. I try to leave politics aside. Um, so I'm here in support of option B because um, we the people is no longer a thing in 2020. Instead, there's bureaucrats who still tax funds from the public and, um, and also, uh, <clears throat> also the police unions and attorneys that's where a lot of the big problem is. Um, that's why, like in Tempe, there's an officer that's on permanent vacation after murdering this child right here that I'm wearing his shirt. So um, I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing even if we're under investigation by the Department of Homeland Security, by uh, any, any force, it doesn't matter, your police are gonna get watched. Mayor of the Council, my name is Warren H. Stewart Sr. I represent the African American Christian Clergy Coalition. We are very thankful that this item is on the agenda today. This, this is 2020. One of the symbols of 2020 is 2020 vision, that we see clearly the present, we see clearly the future. This meeting is about 2020 vision. We respect, appreciate, and support our police department. The police police our community, our citizens, our residents. When we break the law, when we are accused of breaking the law, because we believe that the community, no matter how best we might feel we can, are not able to police ourselves. Therefore, when our police break policy and or break the law in relationship to our residents, our citizens, they are not adequately prepared to police themselves, just like the community is not prepared to police themselves. We need a civilian review board for the process to be transparent, the process to be objective. And so we thank you for allowing this to reach this point. We believe the Citizen Review Board will bring forth accountability and transparency. And hundreds of thousands of Phoenicians, especially those who are poor and people of color, are here to support a Civilian Review Board for Phoenix, Arizona. We support Plan B. But if we have to, we'll take plan A. God bless you. Isis Gill, followed by Marty Winkler. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and gender nonconforming individuals of our community. Uh, my name's Isis Gill. I'm with, Devel I'm with Puente Human Rights Movement, um, a local human rights organization here in Phoenix. I'm here in support of Model B for the Civilian Review Board, particularly because of the fact that we need investigative powers when we are speaking about our police department. Um, investigative powers are instrumental in ensuring transparency and accountability, particularly for a community that has been criminalized over and over again by over-policing. I agree with the fact that the city of Phoenix has many social issues. But I'm here to believe in the idea that the way forward is that we confront these social issues head on. Meaning that we need to accept the realities of our city. Phoenix has become one of the deadliest in the nation. Within this last um, year, that, that statistic drove us to lead the nation. Phoenix Police Department has in the last 10 years paid over $26 million to victims of police incidences. 
The Civilian Review Board would approximately be 1.7 to 1.84 million dollars. Realistically, if we were to expedite that over 10 years, that doesn't even co cover the costs of the lawsuits that we have had to pay for our own mistakes. The police department as itself has a budget over $700 million. And I am here to speak to the issues that many of us have brought up, that we have issues in our schools, we have homelessness, we have mental illness, we have addiction, but those are not problems that we can solve through authority or jails or any other type of police violence or brutality that can come our way. This is not an easy conversation, and the realities of this is the democratic process that we are asking for are going to take time. We understand that, and as a coalition of 10 plus organizations, we have spent months speaking to each other to find out what is the best in our interest as a community, and all of those involved, the council, member, the council members included. I am here again just to voice the point that Model B is still in influx and will be developed, but we as a community hope that you all move this forward with our support and in conjunction with everyone else here. Thank you so much. Marty will be followed by Diane Barker. My name is Marty Winkler. I am an extreme victim of Phoenix police. Jason Gillespie of Sunny Soap Substation, Desert Horizon Precinct. I support Model B with investigative power that Carlos Garcia is proposing. Anything less is a sham and an insult to the people that have been fighting for over 20 years for accountability and oversight of Phoenix police. I've read, watched, and been outraged and sickened at the accounts of extreme Phoenix police violence and corruption for 40 years. And I never thought it would happen to me. The city of Phoenix does not want people to know my story, my horrific assault by Jason Gillespie. I called the police for help at a Circle K in North Central Phoenix and in dereliction of his duty, Jason Gillespie never even investigated why I called for help. He accused me of trespassing and proceeded to bludgeon me half to death. Four fractures to the front and the back of my skull, traumatic brain injury, brain hemorrhaging, four days in the hospital in ICU, extreme eye, head, and jaw injury. I lost 36% of my hearing and now permanently disabled. The city of Phoenix, Phoenix Police, and Desert Horizon Precinct did every dirty trick in the book for almost five years to try to cover up my federal civil rights case and have it thrown out. That's what they do. They victimize the victim and circle the wagons. They also strategically erase his records and other police, Phoenix police officers' records, is which came out in the news last year. They make up a false narrative and feed it to the media and the jury. They fight you with the highest powered attorneys that money can buy, like Kathleen Weinecke of Weinecke Law. She even laughed after the not liable verdict was read. She, tried, you for your testimony. she tried everything to intimidate and fault me for calling the police for help. In violation of the law, Phoenix police and professional standards never even interviewed him until I went to the media and found an attorney. It's required for a shooting, killing, and serious injury. Fortunately, I found an attorney. Please give us your final thought. Uh, other people went way over. And Phoenix Police, Phoenix City of Phoenix has refused to put body cameras on Phoenix Police and only after the incident last year because they know without video it's very difficult to prove in court. Corruption is when you do something illegal or unethical and do everything to cover it up. Thank we, you. This concludes We cannot your trust Phoenix police to do the right thing. And Diane Barker is our next speaker. You've had more time than any other speaker today.
Is Diane Barker here today? Uh, Leonard Clark will be our next speaker. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, as many have said, uh, it's been a long, hard struggle to get to this point. Um, I don't think anybody, some people, I can't speak for other people who've had loved ones that are murdered or, you know, have had all of these abuses occur. Um, I'm sure there are officers you've seen that have saved people's lives, but we also have officers who've taken people's lives. And, you know, we've had multiple examples in the Mesa Police Department where the officer slaughtered a man begging for his life. Ant uh, Antonio Arce, say his name in the city of Tempe. It's not about Democrats or Republicans. I, rem I realize you're circling the wagons because in many times when we need someone to respond to an emergency, you know, it is our police and our firefighters. So, but in reality, this is going to protect both groups of people. To say that there is no breakdown in the trust uh, with respect, I just have to respectfully disagree on that. To say that there's no breakdown in trust is not true. Um, you know, I, I feel that this process has taken too long. Um, I feel like it's like a techno technocratic kind of process. There are some people that I sense empathy from on the council. Um, it's hard, you know, when you have all of these political groups, the union, which is the most powerful union. And by the way, in 2017, when the chief law enforcement officer came here, the man in the White House who is now allowed to break the law and is not held to accountability, when he came here, I didn't see any justice. You know, nobody considered about foam projectiles fired at citizens. Nobody considered uh, tear gas fired indiscriminately into thousands of people. Some, one was a Tempe City Council person. Other people, very reputable, because maybe one provocateur or two threw plastic bottles. I get it. Go get the go get the person, the perp, the perpetuator. But to fire indiscriminately into thousands of people. But what happened? I mean, the ACL took up the case. What what has happened? So. Um, I'm not here to, you know, there are folks on the right and the left, the police do no wrong, folks on the left, the police do no right, but right now, uh, you know, I've walked in privilege for most of my life, so I can't tell you the terror I must have, or if I'm indigenous or I'm of color, you know, seeing your family member taken off, beaten, nobody does anything about it. So I, I strongly support option B. Um, option A is just a watered down excuse but hey, if we got to take it, I mean, <laughs> but I don't even know if we're going to get that. Um, another thing Thank I'm concerned about testimony. is a civil service board. Am I done? Yes. All right. Well, but you know how I feel. Option B. Thank you, Councilman Garcia. And to anybody who votes for that, let's have some justice in Phoenix. Thank you. Uh, Garrick McFadden will be our next speaker. Uh, Michelle Rose. Okay. So uh, we think Garrick is still here or we think he had to leave? He's coming, okay, perfect. So we'll do Garrick McFadden, Michelle Rose, and then we will uh, take a break. It will be like one minute after 4.30, but approximately 4.30. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Um, we know what we know. We know that 10% ten, um, 10 of police officers will have a misconduct uh, claim made against them in their lives. Only 30% of those will be substantiated. So, 70%, so of that 7%, we know that most of them are committed by the same people. Councilman Nowakowski said something that was very um, insightful. He said that do the questions proposed by the monitor have to be asked, or um, can the investigators deny it? And we never got a really a remark from that, uh, answer to that. So the next part was, um, can the investigators actually refuse to answer, to ask the questions? So I looked at uh, the Colorado um, model civilian report, built, um, annual report, and it states that the monitors cannot ask questions. They just monitor. So that's in Appendix A of the 2018 uh, Cal uh, Colorado Civilian Review Board 
uh, thing. So my question to you, the council or to the gentleman that gave the statement is, if the monitors ask or present a question, does the investigator have to answer that question? If the answer is no, then I strongly support B, because that is the only way that questions can be, ans can be asked that are important. And that way, it will give the full appearance of impropriety that everybody will be able to answer uh, to perform what they want to do. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Michelle will be our final speaker before we take a break. Hi, my name is Michelle Rose. My family lives, works, shops, and attends church in Phoenix. I'm asking the city council to vote for Model B, proposed by Councilman Garcia. If we have any doubts that Model B is the only path to justice, just this last week, ABC 15 released a compilation of the Brady List. The Brady List contains the names of law enforcement officers who are, quote, tracked by prosecutors for credibility concerns, including past crimes, lying on the job, and other integrity issues, end quote. Last week, in that, uh, they released that searchable database, so you can go home and look that up yourself. Um, I don't have time to list all 1,400 Arizona law officers who were identified, uh, and I don't have time to even list the 114 Phoenix police officers who are still active on the job. They are still allowed to collect evidence, testify, and send people to prison and tear apart their families. The tr this truth spotlights the fact that police have been criminally ineffective at investigating and in holding themselves accountable. It highlights that innocent people go to prison while the actual criminals are free to commit more crimes. This means Phoenix needs an independent, investigative, transparent, community-driven, and well-funded civilian review board. That is Model B, recommended by our civil rights champion, Councilman Garcia. Model A, <laughs> Model A ignores the cries of the victims and their families and makes Phoenix less safe. Finally, I'll say silencing families that can't get here by 3.30 p.m. on a Tuesday is racist, it is classist, and it's anti-democratic. Thank you. We will now take a break. Welcome back to the Phoenix City Council meeting. Welcome back to the February 25th Phoenix City Council meeting. We'll begin with testimony from the public. We'll have Sean Severud, followed by Amira Lowry. back. So I'm going to say many of the same things I said last time we discussed the CRB because apparently these things need to be said again. It would be nice if the mayor would actually listen to the people instead of trying to give us something 
we did not ask for. No one asked for Model A. Maybe Plea did, I don't know. Um, and let me remind you that Plea is a racist police union, which the majority of even their police officers um, don't support. Um, I don't know if you remember when um, Plea and Sal DeCicio happened to get together and tried to do a no vote uh, in Police Chief Williams just because she started to kind of hold her police officers accountable. Um, and they said no to that, so just FYI, that happened. Um, so I know that Council pers Councilperson Garcia and his office spent months working with the community to draft Model B. So that's what the community has been asking for. Model B has investigative authority, uh, which again is not a nice to have, it's a prerequisite on which this entire CRB process should be and is based on. <sighs> Mayor Gallego's model continues to allow the mod continues to allow the Phoenix PD to investigate itself. Anyone with a modicum of common sense understands that under that version of a CRPB or <laughs> CRB, nothing will change. Model A would allow the culture of violence to continue and to perpetuate itself. Model A would be a slap in the face to everyone who's been hurt by police misconduct and abuse, every black or brown person unfairly targeted, every person sexually assaulted, every mother that has lost a son or a father, every child who has lost a mother or a father, Model A would be all for show, and again, if it's all for show, it's all for not, vote for Model B and give us the CRB we asked for. Thank you. Amira will be followed by Erica Ovale. Hi, um, my name is Amira. I don't know if you remember me from last time in November, but I was the one who problem problematized that um, your meetings are 2.30 on a Tuesday, uh, yeah, today's Tuesday, um, where people have to work, people can't be here, it's inaccessible, so how can you expect the community to have a fair voice if we can't even um, fairly give them the right to be here? That's number one. Number two, I just want to um, throw out the facts, right, and make it clear that Model B is exactly what the community asked for. We laid out what's called a rubric. We said independent, investigative, community-driven, and transparent. We told you what you wanted, and what did you do? You came back with something that did not meet any of these, to be honest. Model A is not independent, it's not investigative, it's not community driven because we didn't have any hand in even writing it. And the fact that if you think you're, the transparency in it saves you, it doesn't. Model B is what we need, it's what we ask for, and if you don't, you, like, like I said last time, Civilian oversight is extremely important because poli uh, Phoenix Police Department was the deadliest police force and yet you want to deny us the right to have a say in how you kill us and how you dismember us and how you assault us, right? So at the end of the day, Model B is what we're asking for, to give your constituents anything less than that. You are not serving the people, you're serving the interest of, of those who are not over police, who are not over surveillance, right? So at the end of the day, the people who are over police know the solution and we say Model B. And I want to reiterate that because I personally don't want Model A, okay? I, last time I said don't give us something half-baked, this isn't even half-baked, this is still in the batter. At the end of the day, we deserve Model B because, as we said, independent, investigative, community-driven, transparent, why would you present a solution that barely even ticks at the problem? If you're not here to solve the problem, then say it. We'd rather respect that, right? So at the end of the day, Model B is what we need. Council people, we're asking for it. Why do we not have it? Fine, the people who want to vote know. At the end of the day, if you vote Model A over Model B, just know it's a disservice to the community and the community deserves a real voice in civilian oversight. That's what we're here for. So if you missed work to be here, let them know Model B is what we want and I'm not leaving until we get it. Thank you. What's up? My name's Erica. Um, I grew up in Maryvale, and um, I would say being policed was the norm. And uh, at a very early age, uh, my house became a target by the police. Um, I was seven years old the first time I experienced a police raid. Um, my brother was 13. They were coming to our house to find my brother. He was 13 at the time, and at the time, they were kicking in our door at gunpoint to uh, ransack our house to look for a bunch of minors while my parents were at work. 
Uh, years later, my brother eventually was shot by Phoenix PD. And uh, not only was he shot, but he was beat up afterward. And as a family, there was no resources for us. There was no help. Um, and we got no justice, really. And to this day, my brother has bullet holes. He has bullet holes. He still has bullets lodged inside of him. Uh, he was given about $3,000, and made, he was forced to sign a contract that he would never talk about it again. So I'm here because when I was a kid, I learned very quickly that I needed to learn my rights because the police were abusing power, and they were still coming to my house. And I had to learn about warrants as a 10-year-old kid and say, no, you cannot come in here. And so we want accountability, and we want transparency, and we want uh, the community to be involved because we're directly impacted and anything else other than that is watered down and so i'm going to vote for model b all day and uh i don't know we'll catch you outside how about that michael alexander greetings to the community uh michael alexander with uh, black phoenix Organ organizing collective and uh, we know that the police will not adequately uh, investigate themselves. We also know how victims of police, police violence are not prioritized by those who defend police. What we know to be true is that police violence is ultimately divisive. Talking about how to hold cops accountable is not divisive. That is ignoring accountability in and of itself. Police violence against our community is divisive. I cannot emphasize that enough. That is why we're all here. That is why we demand civilian oversight that is community-driven with investigative authority. That is why we require a community-driven policy that is accountable and transparent. This is not a matter of different points of view when the community must endure guns drawn on us. Being sexually assaulted by police is not a different point of view. We need to prioritize our community instead of using both sides' false equivalencies. And cutting the community out of the policy writing process reinforces this culture of violence that dehumanizes us. So we don't need false accountability through Model A. Today we require the vote in support of the second model, Model B, with investigative authority. We, as a coalition, uh, as a coalition, as community, call for Mayor Gallego and the city council to stand with us and with the investigative model, Model B. We need a Phoenix model created for Phoenix community members, not a supposed Denver model. If our city officials are to support our community and our safety and humanity, they will support the Civilian Review Board model that was designed by our community here in Phoenix, which is Model B. Thank you. Daniel Sanchez Alva. followed by Lisa Long. Hello community, I am Danny. Hello people who have the power as of right now. Uh, I look like this, I am young, I am brown, and I am a man. And when I leave my house, well, I feel relatively safe when, when I'm in my house. But when I leave uh, my house, whether it's to go to work or, or to uh, do any of the activities, I, in the back of my head, I question, you know, what is the likelihood that I get pulled over or have an interaction with the police? I, you know, my, my heart's racing. Uh, and similarly, uh, I don't know whether that interaction will be uh, a fair one or whether they will abuse their power. I know that if power gets abused, that I can't count on the procedures to file a complaint because I, I don't trust that they will be fairly done. Uh, and just like myself, there are other members in the community who, who share the same experience. Um, I don't think that we should compromise and do something that is, is, does not meet the needs of the community and does not help people feel safe to be able to do normal things without having to consider whether the police will be held accountable or whether um, or, or not. Because as of right now, 
uh, there's not, and people have lost their lives. Uh, a lot of families have gone through uh, trauma, uh, and we have not uh, addressed this issue accordingly. Model B is the only model that uh, does uh, support, you know, the investigative model. Uh, I'm all for it. I think it's a good start as we continue to address these issues going forward. Anything less than that is not acceptable, and I will continue to be here until we get what we deserve. Because uh, I deserve to be able to be part of the community and feel safe, just as anybody else, and I should not have to compromise with that. Lisa will be followed by Xenia Aronia. Lisa Long. Xenia will be followed by Susan Peralta. That was not on purpose. My name is Senia Orona. I am a child of Maryville. Uh, I currently live in Councilman Nowakowski's district. Um, I reject the concept that police are part of the community. I will believe that when we have a full census showing us how many Phoenix PD officers actually live within the Phoenix city limits. I believe that Model B is the best, is the best option for our, our members of our community who are constantly and persistently targeted by the same members of uniform that are in this room today. Uh, to offer Model A slapped together in two weeks is the equivalent of procrastinating your final. Uh, there have been months upon months of meetings, testimony, and pain shared to this podium, shared to this same council. And to have this last minute Model A option offered is an insult. I dare you to look in the face of every single one of the members of this audience today and tell me that you with sincerity are offering Model A as an option and, uh, and sincerely think that it's going to protect people, victims of police violence who have their, whose family members have bullet holes in their bodies, whose family members are six feet under. You really expect us to accept that? No. Model B is the option to go. Susan will be followed by Michelle Caldwell. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Susan Peralta, and I'm here today because September of last year, I was on Jefferson and Third Avenue on my way to file some documents in Superior Court when I was parallel parking and uh, before I could even turn off my car, an officer was there at my window. He was shouting at me that I had hit his car. Um, he asked me not for my driver's license, but for my papers. Um, he wouldn't stop shouting, telling me, you know what you did, you just hit my car. I finally asked if I can get down and, and see his car because I didn't even feel, not even a little bump when I paralleled park. He let me get out of my car. I went over and looked at his car and there wasn't anything on his car, nothing. I was so confused, I couldn't wrap my head around what, what the hell's going on? What's going on here? This officer is so angry, what, why is he so angry? I really thought he was going to pull me out of the car and do something to me. He kept telling me, you know how bad things can get for you? Things can get bad for you. <sighs> he finally left me alone when I mentioned that I work for a law firm. He backed off. He told me to have a good day. His words to me were, I didn't see anything on my car, did you? After he, sat, after he stood there yelling at me, 
When I got out of my car, the first thing I did was put change into the meter, take pictures of his car, because I was so afraid that he was going to come back and accuse me of something. I went into the courthouse to file the documents I had. I couldn't stop crying. Mayor Gallego, you're the first person I thought about calling that day. But I could not stop crying. I went upstairs, filed a complaint, called, called my office, let them know what had just happened. That night, I was so scared I couldn't even sleep in my room. I slept in my living room with all the lights on. What I kept thinking over and over again was if this could happen to me in front of Superior Court, two blocks away from Phoenix PD, this can happen to anyone, to anyone. This was 11.45 in the morning, daylight. What if, what if it would have happened at night? What would that officer have done to me? Thank you for your testimony. Mayor Gallego, I ask you and urge you, please, please vote for Model B. Michelle will be followed by Tremekas Muhammad. Good afternoon. <clears throat> my name is Michelle. And this really blows my mind that this is a controversial us versus them issue. Um, it seems to me that any person in a position of power whose true mission is to serve and protect would be welcome, would welcome the reasonable type of oversight that is included in Councilman Garcia's proposal. And those who are opposed, it begs the question, what do you have to hide? So I implore you to vote for Model B, an independent, transparent, community-driven oversight board with investigative powers. And I, I wanted to say one thing about Mr. DeCicio's extremely offensive and tone-deaf one bad year comment. I, I don't even know what to say about that, um, except I'm sure that the victims of that one bad year are going to live with it for the rest of their lives. So please vote, Model B. My name is Tremekis Muhammad. Uh, I represent the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee for Justice or Health. Um, and I'm for a proposal of Model B. And I'm really confused as to why we're here, right? Uh, I don't know why we're looking at two models. You know, we, we, are, we are intelligent people. And when you look at Model B, it's proven. Because your attorney did a very good job, did a comparison. We came up with a model that when you look at Model A, there are very, very few differences. So that means we put some thought into what we were doing. We were clear in our thinking and what we were asking for as a community. And the only thing that is different is that we're asking that the community have investigative power. What's wrong with that? You as a department investigate officers because you don't trust that the officers will always tell the truth. You had plea that stood up here and said there are some officers who are willing to lie because of fear that they will lose their jobs. So if we are requesting that we sit in a room and ask questions of police officers based on legitimate complaints that are coming from the community that they serve. It's not something that we're making up in our heads. The community is saying, this is something wrong here. This officer mistreated me. Is there any evidence in the country? Is there any evidence in the city that officers have mistreated the citizens? Your own reports show that your officers abused their power. Your own report show that the officers here, and we're not talking about good officers. We're not, who can, listen, the, the idea 
that you present, oh, there are good officers out there. We're not talking about them. We're talking about the rogue officers, the bad officers, the ones that rape citizens. We're talking about the officer that kill unarmed citizens. We're talking about the officer that shoot children in the street. And for you, Mayor, to be a servant of this city, to present a proposal to us to fight, there's nobody else presenting a proposal to fight against us but yours. It says a lot to us about what you think about us as a people and our suffering and our pain. You're looking at in this room, this coalition, you're looking at people who are in pain. But you know what the difference is? I'm going to close on this point. You haven't felt the same pain that we feel. But there's a way to make cities feel pain. And we said it at the church, and we're saying it again. You think you have a choice of A or B, but you don't. You really only have one choice. And if you don't understand that, then maybe we ought to get together coalition and not just talk about how we're going to present and, and talk about what we're going to say in our talking point. Let's talk about how we're going to shut this city down. Jeremy Healthcott. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of the council. Thank you. I'm Jeremy Healthcott. I'm a proud resident of District 1. I think most of you, if not all of you, also know that I have served for the past seven years on the Human Relations Commission for the city, and I served on the Community and Police Trust Initiative Task Force as well but I am here today on my own accord. You've heard me give testimony time and time again, dozens of times in the last five years on behalf of those bodies. You know, and most of the people I think in this room know, that when the call comes, I answer it. I show up to every meeting I'm asked to be at if I can physically and ably be there. I have dedicated myself to trying to build bridges between the honorable men and women of our department, our police department, and again, I say the honorable men and women of our police department. Some don't necessarily fall into that category all the time, and between our, our community. And I'm asking today for the first time for each of you to give me something back, please. This option that is on the table, this A model that is currently under the motion is going to put us right back here where we have been time and again, whether it's in three weeks or three months or three years, we're going to be back here. We need to do something at this point that the community will believe in and that carries the weight and the trust of the community or it's another empty action that's going to leave us trying to answer the same questions again. I am begging you personally as a resident of this city who loves this city, who loves its institutions, and who puts my time and my money where my mouth is when it comes to that. If you're going to take action today, it has to be meaningful. And I want to point to one thing. When we convened the CPTI task force and made the recommendations that we did, there was resistance to a number of them. Most notably, our top recommendation, which is now, after the National Police Foundation recommended it again, the PGP recording, when officers point guns at individuals. We heard that this was going to dismantle the department, recreate policy, that plea would never go for it, that the members would be up in arms. We've had that implemented for months now. The department is still here and functioning, and the numbers show that maybe that, amongst other things, is working. I ask that we stop kicking the can down the road. It's hit a cul-de-sac. We need to take meaningful action today. That means the proposal made by Councilman Garcia, 
not the proposal currently on the table. And I thank you all very much for your time. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Sarah Tacola, followed by Hayden Renato. Hello, my name is Zara Tacola, and I'm with Black Lives Matter Phoenix Metro. We, the community, came up with a push for the Civilian Re Review Board. Make no mistake, we are the reason we are talking about this today. And District 8 listened to us. They brought us in a coalition of communities most impacted. They modeled accountability, transparency, and democracy, showing us local government can actually serve the people. Unlike Kate's Model A which was created in backroom deals with the police and national orgs that have no pulse on the local situation. Kate co-opted our idea and then took the teeth out of it. What's the point of looking at closed cases? Because that's what her civilian review board does. How can police investigate themselves? Because that's what her Model A does. I am a PhD student. I can't be my own peer review committee. Okay, so no other discipline, no other field allows that. Okay, you know you were wrong. That's why you didn't release your model until Friday, which by the way is illegal, your deadline was Thursday, and you released the model while you were in a meeting with Black Lives Matter, knowing we were meeting with you given this policy. That is just wrong. Your policy process was not transparent, your model fa fails all four of the community's demands. Kate, your model is dangerous. It legitimizes a violent police force. Kate, it would have been better if you did nothing at all, okay? Because, and we will remember it your next election. And let's clear something up. Our model B is not anti-cop. We're doing this to help cops, okay? The police bureaucracy is corrupt. It does not have community trust. That is not a matter of opinion. Your Phoenix Police P Department has a recruitment problem. Why do you think that is? No one wants to be a cop. Kids don't dream of being police anymore. They run and hide from them. The lack of trust creates problems from everyone, from the police to the community. So if you support Model B, you can restore the faith back in the fourth and in the fear in our communities. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Hayden, and I strongly support Model B as presented by Councilman Garcia. Separation of powers is necessary because the police have too much authority as an executive arm of government. I don't think that Model B is gonna solve everything, but it is definitely the best option we have. Checks and balances are necessary for a government to be truly by the people and for the people. We do not want people who have broken our laws to investigate themselves. Officers who violate human rights cannot be trusted to enforce them. I was born with privilege that I didn't earn, and I want to use this privilege to dismantle racism and its tokens of enforcement, including the racist and classist legacy of unchecked policing. Model A is a figurehead model, which shows that the mayor has willfully overlooked the demands of the community. I cannot support Model A without an investigative component. I support Councilman Garcia's model because it is the right thing to do and is what the community has demanded for so long. It is either Model B or nothing. Thank you. BD Hernandez. Um, 
I don't even know what to say. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a lot of things. My name is Viri Hernandez. I am with Bullet in Action. Earlier today, we submitted a letter with over, at this point, over 80 different organizations, faith leaders, businesses that are asking for a vote in Model B. Anything less is a lie. It's a false a sense of accountability that we can no longer afford. Model A ignores the cries of mothers, of sisters, of people who have come to this room and said that whose loved ones have been killed by police. It ignores the cries and the pain of women who have been sexually assaulted, who have been harassed or who have been stalked by the police. Some of those families are here today. And I don't know if they're gonna talk and, and you know, and I don't know how much more we can talk for you all to listen to what they're saying. You're asking a victim to allow the crime that they are, that happened to them to be investigated by the friends of the person who did that to them. That doesn't even make sense. That is how it has been happening for this whole time. And people are saying, we demand a change. We need an investigative powers. And honestly, Model B is in itself enough. We really should be talking about community members having the power to fire police officers when necessary and when evidence is there. But at this point, Model B is the only thing we have to move forward. If it is not Model B, there is no, this, there's no such a thing as anything is OK. It is not. Model A would be dangerous, would give us a false sense of accountability, and would allow these investigations to continue to be on themselves, not providing any transparency to the community, not allowing for input from the community, not allowing for questions. It is all an internal process. Police have 21 days to review the report before it's given to the chief. The mothers that we work with every day didn't have one. They don't, have to, they don't get to review those pr proposals. They don't get to have their story be told. And how can we expect that this model is going to value community and value our voice and our input when community has been shut down from speaking at 3.30, a time that doesn't work for our community? So here to reiterate, it is Model B or it is nothing. We deserve more, we deserve your leadership. These families deserve more, and we hope that all of you listen and vote the right way. Danielle Pollitt. Hi, my name is Danielle Paulette. I'm a Tempe resident, but I have a son with special needs who attends high school in Sao de Sicio's district. He's on the autism spectrum, he has epilepsy, and he has oppositional defiant disorder. Folks with special needs like my son, disabilities, or mental health disorders are at a higher risk of sustaining injuries after encounters with police. As a mom, I feel a lot of fear and mistrust that my boy will be safe. Civilian oversight that includes the ability for civilians to investigate officers in question would do more to bridge this gap within our community. As a matter of safety and peace of mind, accountability builds stronger, more sustainable, more sustainable communities over time. I'm in favor of Model B, I'm in favor of our community having input while writing the civilian oversight policies. Mayor Gallego, please only vote yes on civilian oversight. That is investigative. Thank you. Apologize, having a hard time with the handwriting. Adonias Areva? followed by Elizabeth Venable. 
Hi, my name is Adonia Sarevalo. I am the State Director for Poder Latinx. We're a community organization that does civic engagement work. I am a DACA recipient who grew up undocumented and queer in Houston, Texas, and moved to Arizona a couple years ago. How do you erase a legacy of deportations, of loss like SB 1070 as we're coming to 10th anniversary? How do you erase a legacy of police violence in our communities? Growing up undocumented, I knew that firsthand. I knew that we couldn't trust the police because the police were the people who were implementing the laws that were separating our families. As we're coming to the 10th anniversary of SB 1070, you can erase a legacy of deportations that were implemented by the hands of the police. So the question here is how do you honor, how do you honor and how do you create trust in the community? The answer to that question is you listen and you do what the community is asking you to do. So I'm here so that all of you can vote in favor of Option B, as undocumented as our family continues to be terrorized and our communities continue to be fear of the consequences that has every time that you're in front of a police, whether you have papers or not, whether you have an ID, whether you're driving, whether you're walking. How, do we, how are we gonna honor the families of those who have died in the hands of the police? And how do we honor the families that have been separated by the collaboration of ICE and local enforcement? How do we do that? The only way that we can do that is to ensure that our communities are at the center and that our communities are leading the agenda because they are the ones that voted for every single one of you to be in that position. And the only way that you can honor that and the least thing that can be done is to listen to what that community has asked you, which is option B. Thank you so much. Elizabeth Venable will be followed by Reverend Walton. Elizabeth Venable, Fund for Empowerment. Um, essentially, I'm here to say that um, without an investigative model, there can't be true justice for assaults and for rapes and for killing of community members by police. And this is incredibly important because these voices are always silenced, we're maligned, we're um, told that our input is not necessarily what people in power want to do or want to hear. And this is very frustrating. I've lived in Phoenix, well, I haven't lived in Phoenix my entire life, but I was born here. And I've lived here for a very long time and I've watched as law enforcement has done all kinds of heinous things throughout my life with very little accountability. And it is time for Phoenix police to be reformed. It is time for Phoenix police to be held accountable for their behaviors. And I think also to stop a culture of impunity is important because with a culture of impunity, um, when people know that they're not being held accountable, when they won't face criminal prosecution for their behavior, and when they are not facing true oversight, it's a recipe for them to behave in nefarious ways. So I would just conclude by encouraging you to support um, Council Member Garcia's uh, Model B, because it is the only one with investigative authority. Good Reverend afternoon. Walton will be followed by, I'm sorry, Alexander Chowin. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, City Council, members of the community. Let me begin by first and foremost asking a question, do you hear what the people are saying? Do you hear the cries of the people that have been asking for almost a decade for something to be done and for the model that was rolled out on Friday to be introduced after the work that has gone in it's a slap in the face. I find I want to spit, but I do not want to disrespect these chambers. Today is a chance for the city council to act. 
Recommendations for civilian oversight have been made for almost a decade. This community has been asking for this for years. From the CPTI recommendations to today, the clarion call has been for community oversight for the Phoenix Police Department. And let me put a pin right here. This is not a war on police. This is a tool in the tool belt that allows our Phoenix Police Department to do what they swore to do, that is to protect and to serve. We're not a community attacking, but we're standing with open arms. We're desiring for all people, regardless of race, creed, color, sexual orientation or gender, to be treated fairly. If you may remember, a sitting city council member was wrongfully de detained, and this council did nothing. This is not the time for cowardice. Over and over again, we have held town halls, marches, meetings, and been told something will happen. Today is the day to make that happen through your support for a civilian review board that is independent, in operation, investigative in nature, transparent in its process, and community driven as to build trust. And as I hurry to my close, Model B does just that. It's time to take action. It's time to build bridges of trust. It's time not to be cowardly and not to simply pay politics so that you hope you can win the next election. But it's time to take courage and do what's right. It's time to be bold. It's time to lead and not just sit there and look. It's time for the arc to bend towards justice and let justice roll down like waters and flow like an overflowing stream. It's time for the mythological phoenix to rise from the ashes and to take flight. Thank you very kindly. Alexander will be followed by Kumo Wakunguma. Hi, everybody. My name is Alexander Chowan. Uh, first time speaking, so a little nervous. Um, uh, actually, a lifelong resident, 34 years between Scottsdale and District 2, so I have had the pleasure of not having to face what a lot of the people in this audience have faced. And all I'm hearing from District 3, anyone who's against this and strongly against, anybody who's against Model B, is that we know a lot of good cops. That's great. You could have been around good cops your entire life. That doesn't change the experiences of everyone here. And the sheer fact that that is your reasoning is exactly why we need this, because your reality is so far detached from what's happening every day on the streets. Do the math. Two things can be true at the same time. I can't stress that enough. <sighs> Words of John Dalton Acton, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This is true of human nature no matter where we are. No matter what country we're from, no matter what our nationality is, police need oversight that doesn't come from within. It's not oversight that way. There's no accountability whatsoever. <clears throat> Nobody gets a pass. They're great law enforcement. That's fine. We're not talking about those. A lot of people have already talked to that. <clears throat> the funny thing is, if the situation were reversed, I wonder if we'd be having this conversation. What if all decisions on police oversight were made by the community? What happened then? I'm pretty sure we'd be hearing the same exact arguments, but turned around. Police would be begging, well, this isn't fair. We need to be involved in the process. So why is it that when the community is asking for it, it doesn't matter? Why is that? What's the answer? <laughs> there is no real accountability. How can you expect any community? This, the uh, councilman from District 6 is not only just offensive in his discourse, but completely, again, detached from reality. That's his experience. So again, what's the deal? Everyone on here is lying? Is this just made up? Just here where everybody's missing work, family time, whatever, to just say whatever? Come on, let's get real. Thank you. Model B. Kuma will be followed by Sylvia Bronco. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Kuma Wakunguma, and I have lived in Phoenix for about seven years now. And just with the recent attacks that happened to Drayvon and Aisha last year, um, she was pregnant and she had a baby. And these police officers did not view these people as humans, just because they've always viewed black and brown people as nothing. Um, and I'm here today just to say, we need Model B simply because just last year, 
a data research conducted by the project, um, one moment here, the Plan View project found that hundreds of offices in the country, including Phoenix PD, posted racist, sexist, Islamophobic, and derogatory comments about black and brown people on their uh, personal social, uh, Facebook pages. So they do operate from a place of implicit bias. And we have to talk about system, systemic oppression that operates within the Phoenix PD. So when you vote for Plan B, you're saying you're you're standing with these people and saying we do see you, because right now you're not seeing us with Plan A, and we need to be seen. And it's we keep having these conversations and nothing is being done. It's almost as though you don't care. And we voted for you, Kate, because we're looking forward to having finally somebody who might be able to see the pain of the people. But you're not doing the right thing. And I am a young woman, and as a woman who's watching you just sitting there and you're not doing anything, and you have kids, but your kids don't look like me. And they will never experience what many people in this room have experienced. You're privileged, and use your privilege the right way. Sylvia will be followed by Yasmin Ansari. Hi, I'm Sylvia Brongo. Um, I'm a white woman. I live in Cave Creek, and my husband and I have been law-abiding citizens our entire life, up until last September when my husband was arrested for DUI at 63 years old. Um, we've gone through a big process, um, feeling rather guilty, right from the get-go, waiting seven weeks for blood results to come in to dismiss his DUI case, waiting yet again another five and a half months for a body camera record to be provided to us just last week. And half of that camera video was covered up or blocked out or placed on a desk where you couldn't hear what anything else was happening. So my husband doesn't drink or take drugs, I can't even get him to take a Tylenol. And just my layperson's observation with all of this regarding the tape and what we've gone through with this is that the, the police obviously aren't trained on a certain level to really assess who's under DUI and who's not. So I feel that training is important. And so I talked to my lawyer who we had to hire and to help us assist in this process and I said, well, can I file a complaint on the police and all those things that we're seeing? He told me, don't bother. I said, well, why not? Why wouldn't I complain about the things that I see that have big holes? He said, because it will go internally in the officer's file, maybe seen by HR and his supervisor, and nothing will come of it. It won't be shared externally. None of you could look at that. And it blew my mind to think, no one is here to oversee their behavior. You know, if you're a teacher, an accountant, a doctor, you do something wrong, you're gonna have to pay the piper. And so for a citizen review board, which is so important, um, there needs to be accountability. Because Mr. DeCicio, anyone can become a victim overnight without even trying. It happened to us, it's obviously happened to many of you and there needs to be accountability. A, B, whatever model it is, make that change. Good cops are good cops, but there's plenty of bad ones out there who are not doing the right thing. Thank you for your time. Yasmin will be followed by Mukhtar Sheikh. My name is Yasmin Ansari. I'm a District 7 resident and a candidate for the Phoenix City Council. Before I start, I'd like to thank Mayor Gallego for bringing this issue forward and for your commitment to finding a solution. I'm here to advocate for civilian oversight that is independent, investigative, transparent, and community-driven. I'm proud to add my voice to the chorus of individuals supporting Model B. Criminal justice means more than just statistics. It is the stories of our neighbors that have driven the movement for reform. The story of Henry Wayne Rivera, who was shot and killed by police in District 7 last March, unarmed and mistakenly identified for a crime he did not commit. 
The story of Edward Brown, paralyzed after being shot by police, after being suspected of possessing marijuana. In the age of social media, we've all seen the proof with our own eyes. Not just here in Phoenix, but around the country, People and communities of color are disproportionately the victims of police brutality and misconduct. And for far too long here in Phoenix, there has been zero accountability of the department or justice for the families affected. It is painfully obvious that the current system just simply is not working. As the fifth largest city in the country, this is an opportunity for Phoenix to take bold action on an issue that affects all of us deeply in some way, shape, or form. We have an opportunity to stop making headlines around the country for the wrong reasons. And we have an opportunity to work toward a safer Phoenix for every one of us. We have to rebuild trust between the police, who I respect deeply, and the communities that they serve. This can only legitimately happen if the people served by the police have a real voice in the process. People have to be able to trust that if there is an incident, the investigation is going to be fair. I stand in support of Model B because I think it's an important step towards creating a healthy community where every single resident, regardless of their skin color or nationality, feels safe and secure. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Mukhtar will be followed by Ken Baker. Uh, my name is Mukhtar Sheikh and I work with refugee communities. And I met Kay Giego when she was at City Council District 8. She was the first uh, of elected official to reach out to us. And, I, and I've been telling a lot of people today who's not, who dislike you that the work you did in our community. You do have that leadership, and I do appreciate that leadership. And um, also, I'm very happy that the two models came from District 8. So I'm happy about that, our former District 8, K. Diego and, and Carlos. And, and Carlos reached to us. When he was, when was developing this model, he reached to us. We attended several meetings. He took our input. And that's why I'm in favor of Model 8, I mean Model B. Because it has community involvement. It has community ownership. And it's what we'll be asking for day one. And, and to dismiss all the effort we came through to tell all these people here from different backgrounds why they here. And we are not against police officers. There's a great police officers. And, and we like them when they do good, and we like to hold them accountable when they do bad. And that's what we want to do. We want a, a community overview that has that power. And in order to have an effective community policing, the community has to have an ownership. And right now, we don't have that. Even when the city chief tried to do the right thing, the Phoenix Union stopped bullying her. And it started put uh, against cops, I got cops. We need to take that out of it and put it in a community ownership and community overboot so we community hold them accountable, not police officers hold them accountable. And I know your leadership and I appreciate everything you have done for our community and we need you one more time. Thank you. Ken will be followed by Victoria Stahl. Thank you for your time. Uh, last time I was here, I think there was uh, an industrial accident that actually took power out of this building. I think we had to move it to another building, right? And um, it was an electrical vault explosion, an industrial accident, okay? And there was a fire, and power was shut down. And I didn't hear any more about it, but was there an injury? Yes, there was an injury. I don't know how it came out. Was there an investigation? Yes. <laughs> you better believe there was an investigation. And was it done by the city? Just the city? No, it was done by the city. It was done by OSHA. The utility was involved. The manufacturer of the electrical equipment was involved. There was many attorneys involved. And then there was a report generated. And then rules and things were changed. I consider the police department a utility. 
They're public servants. There's good guys. There's average guys. There's not so good guys. Sometimes there's good guys that aren't good guys, and sometimes there's guys that aren't so good, and they become great guys. The citizens are requesting an independent review for industrial police accidents. They deserve the same consideration as the utility, the city, and the manufacturer of the equipment in that vault explosion. I don't personalize business, and what's sad is there's one councilman that's not sitting here listening, and that's the second time this man I've stood up here and spoke, and it's been a vacant chair. So the only thing that can happen in elections and politics is you vote out people that don't want to sit and listen to the constituents. And that's it. So thank you for your time. Victoria will be followed, followed by Angeles Maldonado. Good afternoon, or more like evening, mayor and members of the council. My name is Victoria Stahl. I am a resident of District 5 and a lifelong resident of the city of Phoenix. In August, I was appointed by Vice Mayor Gordado to sit on the Review and Implementation Ad Hoc Committee. In the past few months, I've participated in the conversations and breakouts of the committee that I hope will lead to real and concrete change. I have learned that despite uh, differing perspectives and various backgrounds of the ad hoc committee members, we do genuinely want to work together. I have learned that open and honest dialogue is challenging, but it is crucially important. I have learned the importance in allowing people to have a voice in this process. Looking at the two models proposed today, I firmly believe that Model B is the best option for our city and our residents. When Model A offers a system that audits the final findings of internal investigations, Plan B offers and monitors the ability to have a voice in those investigations while they are taking place. This will drastically cut the red tape, bureaucracy, and lag time of a long, drawn-out auditing system. Model B listens to people. It seeks to independently participate in this process. Model B gives us a voice. I urge you to please vote for Model B. Thank you. Mrs. Maldonado will be followed by Christopher Martinez. Thank you. My name is Dr. Maldonado, and I'm here with Ibarra Maldonado Law Group and I'm here supporting Model B. I wanna address the discourse that we've been hearing throughout the meeting. Um, we have heard over and over about the police being good people, about the police not doing anything wrong, about the police protecting us. And I think that's precisely where the problem lies. What does it mean when we say us? I know that it doesn't mean me, and I know that it doesn't mean my children, and I know it doesn't mean a lot of the people that are here talking to you right now. Protecting us means protecting white supremacy. <laughs> Mayor Gallego, you began this meeting by talking about how it wasn't about making headlines and it wasn't about egos. So I'm asking you to put your ego aside and lead. I'm asking you who ran for office to create change to do exactly that, to create change. That may require making headlines. This is not about a review board that is balanced. This is about a review board that will actually have merit that is not just symbolic, but that it actually will create change, that it will hold the police accountable to the many deaths that they are responsible for. Michael. I have two children. I'm here today because I worry about them. I'm concerned about future police interactions with my children. So I'm asking all of you to please, I'm urging you to support Model B. 
because the reason why we are here is because there is a problem. And, my, and this is not about do we like the police or not. This is about putting in place processes that will enable holding the police accountable, truly accountable, by investigating when there is something wrong, not just by creating something that we can check off and say that we did our part. Thank you. Mr. Martinez will be followed by Ash Us. Um, hello, uh, Christopher Martinez. Um, uh, when I thought first about what I was going to say, I was going to originally I was going to thank um, the mayor for um, her proposal and then argue why B would be better. But then um, I thought back to why I would say thank you, and I think it comes from um, being maybe a little bit older, seeing how things work around here started watching from a youth, how things work in politics and everything. And for brown and black people, you say thank you when you get crumbs. And you accept them because that's what you're used to. And I'm inspired and in awe of all the young people who are saying crumbs aren't enough. And, um, and so they came with a proposal. It's a proposal to have a seat at the table. It's a proposal that says that what's going on is uh, valid and um, needs to be addressed. And you came back with one that said, it really doesn't. And, um, and, the, and you wanted to compromise. And you have to understand, Mayor, that Plan B is like a compromise in itself because ultimately the decision is still up to the police chief. Ultimately, that still remains. The hierarchy still remains. It just gives the community a seat at the table to investigate and have some transparency and, transparency and, and a say-so in, in, in how the investigation uh, occurs. So um, with that, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for everybody to please vote for Plan B. And the last thing I want to say really quickly is um, I get that Sal and, and um, uh, Falda, um, that you don't see that there's a problem and you have not had the experiences that the community has experienced. Um, and because you haven't, you can't understand, and I get that. But what separates decent people with the moral center with beasts is having empathy and having respect. So you can choose to not have empathy or respect, or you can choose to look within yourself where that moral center is and say, this is wrong whether I experienced it or not, whether I can see it or not, whether I understand it or not, whether I go to bed crying out of fear or not, that I understand that this is an issue that is real and valid and people are real and valid. And so I'm asking you, I don't know if you can reason with Sal because he steps out. So obviously, Thank you the, for your having a moral center in the beast has already been decided. But I'm asking you and others who are undecided, please, Please support Plan B. Thank you. Ash will be followed by Sandra Solis. Good afternoon, Mayor Gallego and members of the City Council. My name is Ash. Um, I'm going to start just by sharing one of my experiences. When I was 18, I was driving my vehicle, and an off-duty police officer who was intoxicated blew a red light and hit my vehicle. This didn't happen within the Phoenix city limits, but I can speak to my experience of days later when my ribs had healed and when I could walk again, being told that the best option for me was to file a report in the same precinct where this officer worked among the people he had lunch with every single day. It's tough to do that. It's asking a lot of people who are affected by something traumatic to trust in a process where the people who are involved in that experience are making the decision about the outcome. I'm here in support of Model B because I believe that Model A, it does not address the concerns brought forth by people. When you think of the image that you explained, and I'm grateful, thank you, Councilmember Nowakowski, for asking your questions. If Model A is truly based off of the model you took from Denver, it means that people monitor from a distance without the capacity to speak up. People don't need to sit in another room behind a wall to monitor and see what's happening. That's not equity. 
Equity isn't bringing people to the table, it's turning on their mic and allowing them to speak. And that's why I support Model B. I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's overwhelmingly clear that the people here want that. And I'm asking you to please just consider that. To consider what would happen if you had to file a complaint against anyone for anything. You go to PETA Jungle and you fill out an anonymous survey because you don't want to have to tell your waiter that they didn't bring you your side of pickles. It sounds silly, but it's really straightforward. Please hear the people who are here. Don't just have a forum for them to talk. Hear them act based off of what they are saying. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sandra Castro Solis, and I'm a member with Puente Human Rights Movement, and I'm here in support of Model B as the best way to move forward with a civilian review board. We are here representing and with standing in solidarity with the victims of police violent, violence and the immigrant communities who fear the abuses of Phoenix Police Department. As long as there is not a civilian review that addresses the police misconduct with independent investigations to hold police department accountable or has had community input and has hopes of becoming accessible, our communities will continue to live in fear and this is not acceptable. We will continue to hear increasing reports of police violence. We will not back a CRB where police will investigate one another. Anybody with common sense would know that this is something very delusional. We need legitimate change to address the countless injustices that people of Phoenix have had to endure at the hands of our police force. Our community is in support of Model B. It is the only way for our community and city to move for forward. Any policy that is to be passed should be co-written with community. And here today, City Council, we just want to know the community here is for Model B. Which side are you on? It's your vote. Make the right choice. Ana uh, Hernandez followed by Samantha Royal. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anna Hernandez. Um, so unlike maybe some council members, I have personal experience with what a bad year, as Mr. DeCiccio's comment said, and that was me burying my little brother nine months ago. So for him, you know, it was very disrespectful for him to say that when he probably hasn't buried a family member as a result of a bad year, right? Um, so like if you're at home and you break a glass and you refuse to accept that you broke the glass and you just keep living in the glass, what's probably gonna happen? You're gonna slice your foot and you're gonna bleed, right? Well, that's what's happening right now. We're bleeding out and nobody is listening and nobody wants to fix it. The only way to fix the bleeding for this city is to implement plan B, option B. It has to be independent overview. I can't, if I tell you, if I do something wrong and I tell you, hey, I didn't do anything wrong, you're just supposed to believe me? So that's my word, like, nobody has any questions, nobody's held accountable, I'm not held accountable to provide the facts. It's a little hurtful, Mayor, that you put together this option A, because I would wage that if you had sat, if you sit down and have a conversation with my mom, after she buried her son, you would not have put forth option A. I invite you to have a conversation with the actual mothers that have buried their kids as a result of the bad officers, the officers that are on the bad side of the badge. Nobody's questioning the ones that uphold the laws and uphold their oath to protect and serve. But we need solutions and option B is the only start to those solutions. And if you guys keep saying no to us, if you, the more no, there's only so many no's that we're gonna get from the, those at the seat at the table before we come and take the table. Some of us will come for your seats. 
So remember that when you have to vote. Thank you. Samantha will be followed by Miriam Ayala. Is Samantha here? Okay. I'm sorry, is Samantha here? Okay, Miriam. Hi, my name is Miriam. Um, I'm an organizer with Black Lives Matter Phoenix Metro, and I'm also a first year PhD student in justice studies, and I'm also a trained criminologist. So um, first of all, again, I want to thank um, Mayor, uh, I want to thank Garcia um, and District 8 for working with the community and helping us put forward the policy that we have done for um, civilian oversight. And again, I'm here to kind of just echo what community is saying and has been saying about ensuring that um, there is transparency and there is an investigative process in um, a civilian review board, um, unlike the model put forward um, by uh, Kate, uh, Kate. And also, um, I had the opportunity to speak with Kate, and um, I know you mentioned something about there being uh, you wanting to make systemic change within the police department. And if we're going to make systemic change within the police department, then um, cops need to know that when they do get in trouble, they're not going to go run to their friends and talk to them about how, uh, about, and have their friends investigate them. And that's PSB. So there does need to be an outside investigative power that is happening. And this is why we are pushing for the Civilian Review Board. And again, um, I mean, the more you silence our voices and the more you bury them and, you, and the more you dig them under, the more we're going to have to speak up and the more we're going to have to say we, we are human and our, and our voices do deserve to be heard. So um, again, I'd just like, again, echoing what everybody said, please, um, I urge you to vote um, in favor of um, Model B. Thank you. Jess Bristow followed by Ronnie Wollen. Wollensire. Hi, uh, my name is Jess Bristow, and um, I just first wanted to thank the community for being here. I can feel um, not only the love, but also the pain in the room. Um, I have some nephews, one of them is three. I have to tell him about a handful of times um, to do something before he actually does it. So I'm kind of distraught why we're here in the first place um, after months of the community working so vigorously for Model B. Um, it's a dirty political move to introduce Model A after the community has worked so tirelessly to get Model B implemented. It's a flaunt of privilege to not only introduce this, but to have other council members to not even be voting on the matter. The communities I live in and have been a part of have never trusted the violent ideology and culture of Phoenix police. In fact, we have been terrified and traumatized. This is not a new thing. The institution of policing has been this way since the beginning. And when you have police investigating themselves, you perpetuate the institutional violence. Model B gives the community a step forward. This is just the starting point. This model allows accountability and transparency. And transparency. The Civilian Oversight Board allows for a separate entity from the police department to investigate the institutional violence that the Phoenix PD perpetuates on the community. I myself and many others in this room have been traumatized by police. That's why we're all here. Or we know someone who has been. 
And I will not accept any, and we will not accept any other model other than Model B. One of my favorite quotes by Martha Luther King is, freedom is never voluntary given by the oppressor, it must be demanded by the oppressed, which is why we're here demanding that we get a civilian oversight that is independent, investigative, transparent, and community driven. Ronnie will be followed by Juliana. Bring this down a little bit. Hello, my name is Ronnie Wallenzer. I've been a preschool teacher here in Phoenix, in Scottsdale and Tempe for the past four years. Um, and I grew up, my mom is a sergeant for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Um, I grew up in a household where I was taught to embrace the police officers, they're there to protect us. It wasn't until I moved away from the protection of my mother and the police department that I've experienced racism at the hands of police officers for the first time. Um, I wanted to address Councilman DeCicio, who couldn't be here today, so I can't do that. Apparently doesn't have time for community conversations. Um, but, you know what we do? We vote him out of there, right? District 6, where are you? Arcadia, Watuki, right? Get him out. We need someone else in there. <sighs> we're all angry. We're all frustrated. I see you all sitting there. We're tired. It's been a long day. I'm thankful to be in Councilwoman Pastor to live in her district in the Coronado neighborhood. I see her sitting there listening with empathy. Her body language is open. Carlos Garcia, same thing. He's listening with empathy. These are our experiences. We elected you to represent us. Here we are. We are crying for you to support Model B. Listen to us. You have an opportunity to take Denver's model and put it into place and make it amazing for the city of Phoenix. Let's do it. Represent your city. Represent us. Hear us. We're angry. We're hurting. We're bleeding. We're dying. Hear us. Represent us. Protect and serve us. That's all we're asking. Thank you. Juliana will be followed by Jamie Boyle. <clears throat> um, at, in looking at Model A, I was kind of confused uh, because there's these words in here that say proactive, um, proactively make recommendations con um, after a review of closed investigations. And I was wondering, <laughs> Who defines proactive like that? Um, if I use proactive in that way, I think um, anybody I was working with would laugh at me. That, that's reactive. Um, and the, the other problem that I think Model A demonstrates is sort of this, you know, I don't want to say haphazard, but this, there's this mashing together of a, an attempt at two policies. Um, one that actually has shown, been shown to be successful and one that actually isn't very successful at all um, and that's a review policy. We can't claim to be good fiscal stewards just because Model A costs less. If we pay over a million dollars or a million dollars for something that we already do, we wasted a million dollars. Um, Model B much more clearly combines um, the, 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 the elements of the different review policies in a way that's responsive to community and actually effective. We're calling Model A an, an ombudsman model or parading it around as some sort of auditor or uh, monitor model, but most um, auditor or monitor models have significant investi investigative functions. Um, if you look at uh, San Jose, New Orleans, um, even Los Angeles, that's a wide range of cities um, with different populations, but they have the ability to actually investigate um, incidents of police misconduct or expand the nature of individual incidents of police misconduct and therefore they are more successful in recommending p police policy changes to police who then are more responsive to those recommendations because they're actually backed up by um, accomplishments and in investigation or facts and evidence. So not only is the community here supporting uh, Model B, but Model B makes a lot more sense than Model A. 
Uh, thank you. Jamie will be followed by Alex Ross. <clears throat> uh, my name is Jamie Bennell. I'm here to support Model B. I'm an educator in Phoenix. I have been for eight years, and also for the last two years, two and a half years, I've been a private investigator. Um, I often investigate police. Um, I didn't need experience in law enforcement to get that job or to do it well. Um, being law enforcement is not a prerequisite for conducting an honest, fair investigation. We don't need police on a board that investigates complaints against police. <clears throat> that Model A has even been proposed gives me the impression that the wrong voices are being elevated. <clears throat> voices from other cities with other problems, voices from plea. Who knows your motivation for proposing such a half measure, Kate? But what I do know is that Model A is shamelessly flaccid. The community demands investigative power and community participation in the development of any civilian oversight model that's implemented. So we demand that you vote yes on Model B. We won't stand for anything less. And we're watching everyone's vote. And we will remember how each of you vote in November. Alex will be followed by Raji Ganesan. Alex Ross. Raji will be followed by Admira Roman. Is Raji here? Edmara will be followed by Colette Watson. Hello, my name is Admira Roman. Mayor and council members, whether someone trusts the police or not, it does not change the violent experiences that community members have faced and continue to face at the hands of Phoenix PD. The distrust that is felt by so many is fueled by the abuse of power that police have forced upon marginalized identities in different communities every day. Phoenix Police is one of the deadliest police forces. These police need to be held accountable by community members, which is what Model B proposes. Model B is most impactful because it is investigative and it is independent. Police should never be investigating themselves, especially when community members have experienced harm from these same officers. Community members worked hard on creating Model B. That is, what, that is the model that represents what is best for us, not Model A. Thank you. Colette will be followed by Isabel Garcia. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I stand here before you um, as a concerned black woman. And I'm listening to all of my neighbors. I want to extend to you my empathy, my solidarity. Those of you whose loved ones have been killed, injured, maimed, abused, terrorized. And so much of what I would say has been said, so I'll just say two things really briefly. One, I've sat next to some of you. I've sat next to you at Martin Luther King Day breakfasts. I've been at your table. I've been at the Martin Luther King March, black women's luncheons, various community events, and come into contact with you and I see your humanity. But if you vote for Model A today, you do not see mine, and you do not see ours. And you don't need to come back to those settings, because it's 2020, and the days of solidarity for show have ended. So as your constituent, 
I'm a resident of South Phoenix and a constituent of District 8. Thank you, Councilman. As your neighbor, I'm asking you to see my humanity. And as a voter, I want you to know that we will not forget the activities of this day. We carry with us to the ballot box people who cannot meet us there, people who are incarcerated, people who have been killed, people who have been terrorized. And when we cast our vote that day, we will cast our vote for them. So today's activities are not limited to what happens right now before whenever the clock strikes the, 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 clock strikes the end of this proceeding. We will remember this Black History Month that we're currently in, the next one, and all of those times that you show up in name only. We want you to show up for us in action and in policy, and that starts today by voting for Model B. Thank you. Isabel Garcia will be followed by Michelle Ponce. Hello, my name is Isabel Garcia. I live in District 7. I'm here today alongside my community to urge you, Nawakowski, my representative, to vote for Model B, the only model that can move us forward. We need civilian oversight that has investigative authority. The police should not investigate themselves for police misconduct. The current review process is made up of law enforcement, handpicked by the chief. We can't have fair and honest investigations when there's vested interest in protecting the police department. We can't have accountability when the victims of police violence are blamed. Phoenicians have been demanding civilian oversight for the last 25 years. In that time, hundreds of families have lost loved ones. Community members have been racially profiled, stalked, harassed, assaulted, and killed. And the city has paid out millions in lawsuits. <clears throat> we must get to the root of this issue, starting with independent and unbiased investigations. Community members must also be part of the policy writing process. Cutting community members out of the writing process protects the culture of violence that has existed and thrived in the department for decades. In order to rebuild trust, community members must trust the process and people involved. This will only happen by making this process transparent and accessible to the community. Nawakowski, don't disappoint me, don't disappoint all of us who have taken the time to be here, don't disappoint our city, by saying that you don't know the difference between the two models and that you need more time, the time is now. And we cannot wait anymore. I demand that you vote with community, that you vote with all of us who are here, with the families who have experienced police violence at the hands of this department. I urge you to vote yes to Model B. Michelle, we will take Michelle, then Berta Rita, and then we are going to take a break. Is Michelle? Okay, uh, uh, then Berta Rita, and then we will take a break. And we will have uh, one person at a time. And Mario, okay, thank you. Hello, good evening. 
Mi nombre es Berta Rita. My name is Berta Rita. Este, estoy aquí porque me cansé de ser marginada, de vivir entre las sombras. I'm here because I'm tired of being marginalized uh, in the shadows. Y también porque no estamos en contra de todos los policías, simplemente en contra de los policías que son racistas. And uh, we're not uh, in against uh, all the police, we're against the police that are racist. Violentos y que abusan del poder que tienen. Violent ones and that ones that abuse the power that they have. Porque ahora ya ni en mi casa me siento segura. Because I don't even feel safe at my home anymore. El 25 de enero tenía un evento festejando el cumpleaños de mi niña. On January 25th, uh, we had an event where we were celebrating my daughter's birthday. Teníamos música. We had music. Que no molestaba a los vecinos porque no, tenía, no tengo vecinos cercas. And uh, it was not bothering the neighbors because we don't have any neighbors that are close by. Y lo que hicieron estos policías llegar a las 7 de la tarde a decir que bajara la música. And uh, what happened is the police arrived asking for us to lower the music. Estuvo bien, se le bajó. It was fine, we lowered it. A las ocho de la noche llegan otra vez y diciendo que se iban a llevar a mi esposo arrestado. And at 8 p.m. Uh, they came uh, back again and they said that they were going to be taking away my husband, arresting him. Que se lo iban a llevar arrestado porque estaba haciendo un crimen. That they were going to arrest him because he was committing a crime. Y le dieron un ticket como cargo criminal. And they gave him my citation, a ticket, as a criminal charge. O sea, ahora tengo que pagar un abogado, tener cuatro mil dólares. So now I have to hire an attorney, pay four thousand dollars. Para que le quiten ese récord criminal. So that uh, criminal record would be removed from him. O sea, him. que ya ni en nuestra casa estamos seguros nosotros. So in other words, we're not even safe at our own homes anymore. Por eso tampoco estoy a favor del, del plan B que hizo la... Alcaldesa Gallego. That's why I'm not in favor of Plan B uh, that uh, uh, Mayor Gallego has created. El plan A. I'm sorry, it's Plan A. Sí, disculpa, el Plan A que hizo la alcaldesa Gallego. Yes, I'm sorry, Plan A that, uh, that uh, Mayor Gallego has created. Eliminar a los miembros de la comunidad del proceso de escritura es proteger la cultura de violencia que ha prosperado en el departamento durante décadas. Eliminating the members of the community from this process, uh, this writing process, is protecting the culture from, uh, from the violence that has been proposed in the department for many decades. Sí, y es por eso que apoyo el Plan B, porque tiene todo lo que nosotros como comunidad hemos pedido y necesitamos. So that's why I support uh, Plan B because it contains everything as a community what we need. Y, y seguiré aquí luchando. And I'll be still here fighting. Por este bebé que traigo en brazos. For this baby that I have here in my arms. Y porque más personas como Carlos que sabe el dolor de su comunidad de personas marginadas y que no tenemos voz. And uh, with people like Carlos who understand uh, of uh, people that are marginalized Ocupen esos asientos. that, uh, that uh, need uh, these seats. Y me da coraje y tristeza a veces por la alcaldesa Gallegos. Ayer fuimos a su oficina. Uh, occupy this seat. And I, I get uh, angry uh, because uh, yesterday Solo le pedíamos dos minutos de su tiempo. We were just asking Mayor Gallegos uh, two minutes of her time. Yo he caminado por algunas personas de, de ustedes que están ahí sentadas con panza bajo el, con embarazada con mi panza bajo el calor o bajo el, durante el frío. I walked by uh, you guys uh, uh, with my stomach uh, being uh, pregnant uh, in the heat and in the cold. Porque siempre pongo una esperanza en cada de uno de ustedes para hacer un cambio en nuestra comunidad. I always hope uh, uh, in you that uh, you make a change in our community. Y, y me da sí, coraje porque usted no tuvo un, dos minutos para nosotros y nosotros como si tenemos tiempo para tocar puertas una hora, dos horas por ustedes para And que I estén ahí. I get upset because you don't have two minutes uh, to give us the time when we're out there knocking uh, on doors uh, for you so you can be there.
Ahorita estoy enojada y molesta porque entramos con, tenemos otra niña porque desafortunadamente el horario que tienen tampoco es justo para nosotros. And I'm also upset because uh, we have another, uh, another daughter uh, because uh, the time, uh, it's not convenient for us. Y, y no teníamos donde dejarlos. And we didn't have a place where to uh, leave them at. Nuestros niños más grandes están en la escuela. Our older children are at school. Y quisimos pasar unas galletas que son sus snacks de ellos que necesitan por el tiempo que estamos aquí. And uh, we wanted to give them some snacks, some uh, crackers uh, because of the time that we've been here. Y no nos dejaron pasarlos, tuvimos que sacar we su comida to, de ellos afuera. We eso no es justo. We weren't allowed to pass them in or get them in, and that's just not fair. Por eso los niños los oyen que están llorando porque quieren, quieren comer, tienen hambre, pero también es importante que nosotros hagamos escuchar hoy nuestra voz aquí. And that's, that's why you hear our children crying, because uh, they are hungry, but it's also important for our voices to be heard here. Gracias, Carlos, por pensar en tu comunidad. Thank you, Carlos, for thinking in your community. With that, we will now take a break and recess the council meeting. We will reconvene the Phoenix City Council and resume with public comment with Manuel Saldana, followed by Estella. Is Manuel here? Wonderful, welcome. Um, hello, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Thank you for letting me speak. Uh, 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 the, uh, I first uh, started doing um, community work back in 2006. Uh, I grew up in uh, District 5, and my sister had uh, done a walkout uh, for Prop 300 back, back then, and she was arrested by a police officer. Um, she was trying to get to her bus stop. A police officer said, no, you have to go over there. And she's like, no, I'm trying to get home. And he's like, no, you're going to jail. A 14-year-old was slammed on the floor that same day. Uh, a bunch of uh, students from colleges got together, and we all started doing a type of oversight of police during these walkouts. A student would call one of us, and then we would go and watch them and make sure that the police didn't do that. That didn't happen again. No other 14-year-old was slammed to the floor. Um, now I, I live in District 8, and the other day I was walking and I saw police officers going into a backyard. I started filming them because I thought about um, Antonio Arce, who was shot in the back. And as I was recording them, one of the police officers drove by me and hit me with his door. Um, I don't hate police. My shirt doesn't say hate police. It says film the police. Um, the reason I think I, I don't is because I'm also a two-time Afghan infantry veteran, and I kind of see what they see. Um, one thing that people ask me about the military, I always tell them, people join with goodness in their heart, like for sure. And I think the same thing with police officers, but somewhere along the way, um, the work, something happens to them. One time I remember a uh, sergeant saying, we're not going to take EPWs, we're going to do a double tap in the back. And I always think about, what if there's police officers there that meet other police officers that are saying things like that? We need an independent oversight, somebody that will be keeping an eye out on the outside, Actually, we actually need social workers on the streets, but option B is what we need right now. And please, please do that. Thank you. Estela followed by Betty. Buenas noches. Good evening. Soy voluntaria de Poder en Acción. I'm a volunteer with Poder en Acción. Y, es, y estoy uh, en contra del modelo A. And I am against Model A. Porque exigimos que los miembros de la comunidad sean parte del proceso de redacción de la policía. Uh, because uh, we demand that uh, the community be part of uh, the writing of the uh, 
uh, for the policy and the commission and the review board. Uh, de supervisión civil. Supervisión civil. For the civil supervision. Si queremos reconstruir la confianza en nuestras comunidades. If we want to uh, create again, once again, uh, trust within the community. Nuestras comunidades deben incluirse al escribir esta póliza. Uh, our community should be involved in writing this policy. Debe ser un proceso transparente y accesible. It should be a transparent and accessible policy. Esto solo puede garantizar un verdadero cambio hacia la seguridad para todos en Phoenix. This is the, this is the only way that uh, there could be a, a secure uh, way or security in the community of Phoenix. Y queremos recordarle a los concejales and we also want to remind the council members que el trabajo de la comunidad no empezó cuando ustedes llegaron ahí. That uh, the community's work did not start when you guys started sino there. Sino después de que tomaron sus asientos. But after you guys took your seats. Y por eso nosotros estamos con el plan B. And that's why we are supporting plan B. Gracias. Thank you. Buenas noches. Mi good, nombre es Betty. Good evening. My name is Betty. Y yo estoy aquí porque yo pido la supervisión civil sin autoridad. And I'm here because I'm asking for a civil supervision uh, without uh, authorities. En investigación no es más que una falsa falsa responsabilidad que siempre hacen. And uh, the investigation is nothing more than a false uh, responsibility that uh, they're always doing. Para darnos, un, para darnos una buena claridad de los abusos policíacos. To uh, give us a good quality of the abuse within the police. No es, es como ignorarnos, eh, todo esto nos está afectando para la comunidad. This is like ignoring us, uh, uh, to give us authority within the community. Para... Para tenerles confianza, esto afecta para toda la comunidad. This affects all the community. El no tener más confianza. By not having more trust. De reportar cualquier crimen. Of reporting any type of crime. El que nosotros seamos testigos o veamos que podemos evitar. And the fact that we are witnesses or that we see that uh, uh, we can be affected. También estamos exigiendo we are also demanding que la comunidad that the community sea parte de, de escribir esta póliza that the community be part of this uh, policy writing de supervisión civil as far as uh, what has to do with the civil supervision. Yo exijo que voten por modelo B. And I demand that you vote for model B. Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, good evening. Mi nombre es Marta Flores. My name is Marta Flores. Soy voluntaria, voluntaria de Poder en Acción. I'm a volunteer with Poder en Acción. A dos semanas de tener mi bebé. Two weeks after having my baby. Quise tomarme el tiempo de venir aquí a apoyar a mi comunidad. I wanted to take time, my time, to be here, be part of the community. Estoy a favor de la póliza B. I'm in favor of policy B. Pues no es posible que la policía se investigue a sí misma. So it's not uh, possible that the police be investigating themselves. Pues se, se encubrirían entre ellos. They'd be covering each other up. Y la justicia nunca llegaría a nuestra comunidad. And justice will never get to our community. Sería como si un hermano juzgara a su propio hermano. It would be like one brother judging his own brother. Estoy aquí para apoyar a, a mi comunidad y que se haga un cambio en Phoenix. I'm here to support my community and for there to be a change in Phoenix. Y después, ¿por qué no este modelo se pueda copiar en todo el país? And why is it that this model can't be copied in the whole country? Queremos justicia para los que ya no están aquí. We want justice for the ones that are no longer with, with us. 
a los que proponen el modelo A, the ones that are proposing model A, ojalá nunca pasen por un incidente ustedes o su familia. We hope that you never go through an incident, whether it be you or your family. Porque ustedes mismos van a querer ser los que investiguen a la policía. Because you yourselves are going to be the ones that are going to be wanting to investigate the police. Gracias. Thank you. Juana Rita. Yes. Hola, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Juana. Soy Hello, mi, good evening. My name is Juana. Soy miembro de la comunidad del Distrito 5. I'm a member of the community of District 5. Y estoy aquí. Betty es mi representante del Distrito 5. And I'm here. Betty is pido, my representative for District 5. Por favor, five. que apoyes el modelo B. And I ask her, please support Model B. Porque necesitamos un comité de supervisión civil que sea investigativo y transparente. We want uh, a uh, investigation, uh, a review board that be, uh, be trans, uh, transparent. Que tenemos la necesidad de la participación comunitaria. And we have participation, uh, en el supervision, proceso, uh, supervision from the community. En el proceso de la redacción de la póliza. In writing the in the whole process of writing this policy de la supervisión civil from the uh, civil supervision el modelo b es el mejor para la comunidad model b is the best for the community pienso que debe haber un grupo de trabajo creado i think that there should be a group of created work que incluya al personal de la ciudad de Phoenix which would include uh, staff from the city of Phoenix y también a miembros de la comunidad and also community members para desarrollar completamente to develop para desarrollar completamente el modelo de la póliza de la supervisión civil uh, to develop uh, the model for the civil supervision supervision porque como miembro de la comunidad because as members of the community, Creo que una supervisión civil, I think that a civil supervision crea un finis más seguro. creates a, a more safer environment. Necesitamos vecindarios we do need neighborhoods que sean más seguros para todos, which, uh, that uh, would be safer for all. Porque la policía de Phoenix nos ha demostrado because Phoenix police has showed us que no son seguros that uh, they're not safe para las comunidades de color. For the color community. En el verano pasado, last summer, cientos de miembros de la comunidad, hundreds of members from the community, nos dirigimos a este concilio, we uh, directed ourselves to this council, sobre la urgencia de disminuir, as far as the urge to reduce, la violencia a mano de los agentes de policía de Phoenix, to reduce the violence uh, at hands of the police. Es por esto. And this is the reason why que hemos estado exigiendo that we've been demanding y merecemos and we do deserve una acción urgente an urgent action por parte de ustedes on your behalf que tienen el deber de actuar ahora that you have uh, the authority to act today. Nuestra concejal Gallegos our councilwoman Gallegos ayer no nos quiso dar dos minutos de su tiempo was not willing to give us two minutes of her time Cuando nosotros caminamos para pedir un voto por usted. when we uh, walked over to ask uh, for your vote. Creo que merecemos su voto a favor de la comunidad, que es el modelo B que estamos exigiendo. I think that we deserve your vote uh, for the community, which is in favor of Plan B. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Noemi. Buenas tardes. Good um, evening. Mi nombre es Noemi. My name is Noemi. Y yo les pido que por favor voten por el modelo B. I'm asking for you to please vote for model B. ¿Por qué necesitamos una supervisión civil investigadora? We, because we do need an investigative civil invest, uh, investigation. La supervisión civil sin autoridad investigativa es falsa y es falsa responsabilidad. That the civil supervision without authority uh, and uh, investigative authority is false and is a false responsibility. 
La confianza de la, de la comunidad no se puede construir si no podemos confiar en que las investigaciones sean justas. The trust from the community cannot be created if we cannot trust in the same investigative uh, process, and it's just uh, that needs to be fair. Por eso les pido que voten por el plan B. And that's why Thank I'm you. asking for you to vote for plan B. Thank you. Adam Melcher followed by Kay Thomas. Is Adam here? Is Kay Thomas? Kay is here? Thank you. Thank you for letting me come and speak today. Um, my name is Kay Thomas, and um, I'm from District 8, Carlos Garcia's district, which is um, got quite a few problems that we've been trying to get a hold of him on and haven't been able to reach him. Um, I've lived in Phoenix since 2007. I moved here from Oregon. And um, it's been an interesting transition. But my um, main problem is that <clears throat> it, it's, it's been a, it's been a, different kind of situation. Um, you know, when you have a problem in Oregon, you can call the police and they come out and they take care of it. Um, and here it takes such a long time to get a policeman to help you because there just isn't enough police. Um, when we call the police here, it takes an hour, two hours, sometimes three hours. Um, so, um, there's just so many things that are wrong with this program, and I, I, I don't agree that we have the right to have citizens over judge the police department when we already have those in place. Oh. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. That is our final request to speak card. We have 45 uh, cards in support of Model B. Councilwoman Stark. Thank you, Mayor. Excuse me. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. I want to withdraw my motion for Model A. Thank you. And I will. Thank you, guys. I will withdraw my second as well. Mayor? Mayor, and I, I would like to make a motion to approve a Model B. I'll second that, Mayor. Mayor, I'll second that. And Mayor, with that second, I also have some comments. Um, I actually, I think I would like to 
I'd like to speak first. Go for it. I want to speak to our more than 3,000 police officers. I value the work that you do to keep our community safe. You are seen, you are valued, and your voice matters. I spent some time with a member of our CIT squad who was answering a call from a woman who was facing addiction issues. Her child had told her he didn't want to see her. Her heart was broken and she was considering ending her life. Our officers spent hours building a relationship with her, talking about why she should reconsider that decision. And she accepted services. She is alive today. I believe every day our officers do heroic things and I am grateful. There have been so many heartbreaking calls in the city of Phoenix. We had a woman who took the life of her three children, all under three. Police officers, many of them parents, took the police report. Please. Please give me a moment. This is a very difficult council meeting. I think you will be pleased with the resolution today. I am grateful to our police officers who responded to, the woman, to that case. They had to listen and take a police report in great detail while she talked about singing to her children while she smothered them. This is heartbreaking, incredibly difficult work. They're being filmed, so <laughs> let them be filmed. The work of keeping this community safe is incredibly difficult and incredibly complicated. To those who helped create Model A, thank you. Your insight, input, and forethought was invaluable. It took many months to develop the, the model. We had details which were researched extensively from best practices for other cities. I want to thank everyone who worked hard the detail included a budget, community outreach team, policy analysts, things that we studied carefully and carefully considered because I want us to move forward as a community and I felt we needed a forward-looking model. I do have concerns about the implementation issues with Model B. But as I developed the model, I heard that getting to the finish line was very important for almost everyone in this community. I'm proud of the forward momentum we have made in this past year. No single policy exists in a vacuum. We've invested in better training, better cameras, more resources. All of that works together. I'm grateful to our police department. I do plan to support Model B. Here. Thank you. 
Vice Mayor. So, um, so I just would, would like to say, I just wanna thank community, everyone that came out here um, and, and spoke today. I know that it's not an easy, an easy thing to do to come out and talk about different experiences, um, no matter what. No, ma no matter what you were saying, I think it was important to be able to hear everyone and understand what everyone had to say. Since we began the discussion on civilian review, I have always said that we need to ensure that there is transparency and accountability. Transparency and accountability, accountability to create trust. Trust is shared goal of our council, our community, and our police department. Only with trust we can create safe neighborhoods. I believe that Model B offers the best framework for continuing to grow trust both for our community and for our police officers. We should be very clear that Model B does not change our city charter and our police chief will retain the final decision making powers in the police department, but Model B provides our police chief with additional independent insights so that she can make her best decision. I believe that this model provides the best option for our residents, for our police, and for our city. I will continue to work with our entire community, including public safety, on creating an, an inclusive. For these reasons, I am gonna be voting yes on Model B and hoping that we can continue to work together. <laughs> also that we can continue to work together um, to create that Phoenix that we all want, to making sure that our, our neighborhoods come, come back together with our, with our police officers and that we can continue to, to move together because I think even though it's really hard to see right now, I think at the end of the day, everyone wants the same thing. Like everyone wants to live in a city that they can, where they can trust people. And I think that we can get there. And I am very proud of everyone that came out and spoke today and hoping that we are able to move on and, and bring our community together. Thank you. Councilman Nowakowski. Mayor, I've been on the council for, four, uh, for 12 years under four different mayors. And we've been trying to do this for the last 12 years since I've been on the council. It was Michael Johnson, myself, pushing it back in 2007, 2008. And then when he had that accident with the police officers in 2010, we came up with 15 steps. And we stopped at step number 14, which is exactly what we're doing today. And what I want to make sure is that it was because of the leadership of our mayor. Because all the other mayors, and I'm not going to include Delda at that time because she was just in there for a short period of time, but out of all those mayors, the only one that's taken it to this level and has made a commitment from going out there, and we were at the church, and she says she's going to take this all the way to the end, and she has. And it might not have been the perfect plan, but she brought people together, and she allowed Carlos, Councilman Garcia, to come up with the plan B. And that says a lot for the leadership of our mayor for allowing the council members to come up with another plan, right? So I know there was a lot of words said about our mayor, but at the same time, I, I feel very proud of serving underneath her and for bringing us to this point. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Garcia. I just want to echo the sentiment. So, first of all, thank you all. Um, I got a little emotional with Erica because I think throughout this process, her story was one that impacted a lot of the work and, and showcased a lot of the things that might have not gone right. And she was bold enough to go and, and put a complaint forward and go through it and even show up today for what she went through. So, Erica, I know she, she had to leave, but a lot of this work was inspired by your valor. Um, um, Mayor, I also want to thank you. I think from our uh, Vice Mayor Guardado and myself's first meeting is when this, we started talking about this. You brought back work study sessions that hadn't been 
uh, used, in my understanding, in a long time, so we could discuss this. You traveled yourself to Denver, to Dallas, and, and brought those experts, so I, I want to thank you. And, uh, and to everybody else and the rest of the council, I think this is the beginning, and hopefully we can make sure to follow through with implementation. And I, I, one thing we heard loud and clear today was that community should be involved in the process. So in the steps that we move forward with staff and the rest of the council offices, I hope we can have a process that makes sure that community uh, follows through the rest of the steps. And, and thank you all so much. Councilwoman Pastor. And in the, in the motion, and I don't know if it's, it needs to be in the motion, but in the motion as uh, we move forward, I would like to have uh, all uh, bodies that are part of this process or to be part of this process as we uh, begin to build. Uh, there are a lot of details uh, about Plan B that need to be worked out um, and there needs to be a collective of everyone that is affected by this process uh, to be their voices heard and be part of the process. So I don't know if that we put that in the motion or I don't know if you have it in minutes or, I, or what. So I need some guidance. Betty, can you put that in the motion? We can put that in the motion. Michael, can you second? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, this has been a long journey. And what I mean by a long journey is that um, as a resident uh, that has lived here all her life, have seen many different pieces and changes of, of a community evolving. And we have our, the community that I grew in, uh, grew up in 30 years ago, has definitely changed to where it is today. And as the community evolves, uh, pieces and uh, policy and how we operate has to evolve. And so I appreciate and I'm very grateful for all of you that have been in the trenches, I always call it the trenches, of doing the work that, are, that is needed uh, in order for us to get here today. Um, I appreciate our police. I'm grateful for our police. I'm grateful for that they will also be part of, of some of the uh, process. I um, am grateful at the fact that they do protect our whole community and they are part of our community. Um, and I'm just grateful all the way around where we are today. I do want to put it on the record that um, my vote is not here for a headline my vote is also not about my ego. Uh, my vote is about willing to place change and willing to build a model that is solid, that protects everyone. And so I appreciate everything that you have done and I will be voting for the plan B. Mayor. Councilman DeCicio. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. First, uh, to Carlos and Betty, I mean, you guys are freshmen. You created and did something. You outmaneuvered everybody today. I've never seen anything like that, even from people that are seasoned. I mean, this is a compliment to you both. <laughs> I mean, it's just something I've never seen, okay? Now, let me talk about the plan. This is the most radical, extremist and anti-police plan in the entire damn country. I think this whole BS about, hey, we love you police, and at the same time we're gonna screw you over <laughs> is obscene. And that's what I'm seeing today. This plan here is going to destroy the morale of our police department, and it's gonna put in danger our public. I am not gonna support it, but I've gotta tell you, <laughs> I've on that end of it, but on the other end of it, to see the maneuvering and the way it was handled and basically outsmarted everybody <laughs> up here. Um, 
I, it just you, you got to give yourselves credit for that and that end. I, I wish it would not have passed, though. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to be voting no. Councilman Waring. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I'll be voting no. I, uh, I just want the police officers to know I, I value what you do. The only way I can really express that today is frankly to vote no on this measure. I, I don't want to add another bureaucracy that's going to cost millions of dollars to the city. I don't think it's going to accomplish the goals that the audience members have laid out in previous meetings. Uh, whether, I, whether I agree or disagree with their analysis of the situation, um, but, but bottom line, to the officers, I know you got an extremely tough job. I personally don't want to add your burdens, which I think this will today. Uh, I appreciate what you do. And you know what? Um, we're going to lose today on this one. But, uh, and I accept that. I don't like it. And I just thought it was important to tell you, you officers, that I appreciate what you do. Some of you I know personally, most of you I don't, but I do appreciate what you do very much. I think the residents of District 2, not every single one, perhaps, but I think the residents of District 2, by and large, when I go out, always are very complimentary of your work, and you should know that. I wish you could be there with me when I go door knocking and to hear the things that they say. So I appreciate very much your efforts. Thank you. Roll call. DeCicio? No. Garcia? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Pastor? Stark? No. Waring? No. Williams? Guardado? Yes. Callego? Yes. Five to four? Passes five to four.